Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's recap, we will be looking at a Japanese anime titled Nanbaka. The anime is about Nanba, a cutting-edge prison created for the most elusive criminals who cannot be held in normal prisons. The detainees in Cell 13 are extremely resourceful in this regard, having evaded every prior holding center. Jugo, a seasoned lockpicker serving a life sentence, leads the squad. Uno, an astute gambler, Nico, a drug-sensitive otaku, and Rock, a brawny food enthusiast, round out Cell 13's cast. Their everyday antics present a constant challenge to the facility's administrator, Hajime Sugoroku, who battles to keep them from fleeing Nanba. However, Nanbaka tells a funny, colorful story about the friendship between criminals and their guardians. Nanba prison life is far from cruel and severe, with three square meals served daily and recreational events like sports festivals. Closest thing these four characters have, to a genuine home, I'm sure that at this point you will want to know how everything plays out, right? Then sit back and enjoy. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Namba Prison is an impregnable prison located on a remote island floating on the sea. The prison features guards recruited from around the world as well as the latest technologies and the world's highest level security network. On a certain evening, the alarms go off in the prison because four inmates from Building 13 of the prison try to escape. Seitaru Tanabata, a Building 13 guard, takes note of this and reports it to his superior, Hajime Sugoroku, the Building 13 supervisor. The inmates who try to escape are Uno, Nico, Rock, and Jugo, who are inmates 11, 25, 69, and 15 respectively. At the security station, Seitaru displays a feed of the inmates trying to escape, and then he tells Hajime that the four inmates have a 100% success rate from escaping previous prisons in the past. Soon, Seitaru deploys security protocols to prevent the inmates from escaping following Hajime's wishes, and this reduces the inmates' chances of escaping. Along the line, the inmates encounter numerous booby traps and they all maneuver their way through them. Afterward, Yamato, Hajime's assistant, joins the chase to try and prevent the inmates from escaping. While at it, he gets lost seconds after running in a maze and loses track of the inmates he was chasing. Minutes later, the inmates arrive at a spot where encounter several armed security guards and in the process, Nico, inmate 25, takes a gunshot for Jugo, inmate 15, and falls to the ground. After some time, Nico gets up on his feet after Jugo thinks he is dead, but it turns out that Nico was shot with a tranquilizer. Furthermore, the inmates easily defeat the armed guards, but they encounter angry security dogs who intend to harm them. Surprisingly, Nico approaches the dogs and tames them, leaving the rest of his team shocked as well as Hajime too. After that, they encounter a bunch of obstacles and they successfully make their way to a large door of Building 13 that leads out of the prison. The door features numerous security protocols, which include an electronic lock, a fingerprint lock, a voice lock, and other advanced security protocols. Yet Jugo presses a button on the door that triggers a countdown on the door. It turns out that there is a bomb embedded in the door. At first, when Jugo tries to hack the locks on the door, he triggers the timer again, making it count down even faster. After some seconds of intense hacking, Jugo successfully opens the door microseconds before the bomb is supposed to go off. After the inmates make it out of Building 13, they see Hajime, the Building 13 supervisor, standing meters away from them. At this point, only one obstacle stands between the inmates and their freedom, as they have to defeat Hajime to escape successfully. All attempts made by the inmates to fight Hajime fail, as Hajime easily defeats all the inmates one by one. Following the result of their battle, all four inmates get taken back to their cell, and Hajime, who looks upset, yells at the inmates, telling them not to try and escape again. Meanwhile, Jugo and his comrades brag about the new time record that they set when they tried to escape the prison earlier. After some days, Hajime sits in the guard room and records the prison status in the supervisor's logbook. While at at it, he receives info from Seitaru, stating that Jugo, inmate 15, wants to speak to him. When Hajime gets to cell 13 to meet Jogo, he finds out that Jugo called his attention because he is bored. Also, Uno insists on seeing pretty girls while Rock and the other inmates call Hajime's attention to make absurd demands I would rather not say. Moments later, a conversation between the inmates begins where each of them reveals that they are comfortable in the prison and find it pointless to escape. Hours later, Yamato Godai, the Building 13 Deputy Supervisor, completes a bunch of push-ups during his training session, while Hajime throws Jugo back into his cell after Jugo was found trying to escape in broad daylight. He reveals to his comrades that he saw a woman. This info leaves Nico and the others shocked as they wonder what the woman looks like. One thing leads to another, and the inmates force their way to the visiting room so that they can see the woman. As a result, they all break through a door and see a beautiful lady speaking to Hajime. At first, the inmates assume that the lady is Hajime's girlfriend, but their suspicion gets flawed as they find out that the lady is Hajime's sister. Along the line, Hajime reveals that the lady is his younger brother Hitoshi Sugoroku, and the rest of the inmates look shocked. Meanwhile, Momoko Hyakushiki, the warden, 
arrives at the prison via a chopper and sends for Hajime Sugoroku just before she enters her office. Back at the visiting room, Hajime receives info that the warden wants to see him, and then he leaves his brother to go see the warden. Surprisingly, Jugo escapes his cell to keep Hitoshi company, and Seitaru is tired that Jugo always escapes. Hitoshi insists that he wants to see Jugo, and Seitaru agrees. At the warden's office, Hajime appears before Momoko and lies about the incident that happened earlier. Momoko then tells Hajime not to underestimate the inmates of Cell 13, especially Jugo, who is the son of inmate 610, the Eternal Fugitive. While in the visiting room, Hitoshi finds out that Jugo can unlock any type of handcuffs or lock, but for some reason, Jugo cannot remove the black shackles on his wrist and neck. Seconds later, Jugo reveals that the shackles were placed on him by an unknown person while he was asleep in a previous prison. In Jugo's mind, he intends to find the person who placed the shackles on him so he can get rid of it. While in the warden's office, Momoko gets curious and wishes to know why the inmates of Cell 13 under Hajime's watch have not tried to escape the prison just as they have in other prisons in the past. At this point, Momoko rotates her chair and asks Hajime if he encountered any problems in the prison while she was gone. In response, Hajime lies that he did not encounter any problems, and then suggests bringing the inmates' files to the warden after their meeting. After Hajime leaves the warden's office, Momoko backs her men and thinks deeply about Hajime because he called her last name. It turns out that she has a secret crush on Hajime and she wishes that Hajime calls her first name the next time they speak. The following day, Hajime arrives at cell 13 to take attendance of the prisoner's present. While at it, Hajime finds out that Jugo is missing again and goes out to find him. Along the line, Hajime finds Jugo snoring in the night duty room and he looks pissed when he sees Jugo. When Jugo wakes up, he explains that he escaped because he was uncomfortable in the cell due to Rock's sleeping habits and other factors. During lunchtime, Rock displays an appetite and enjoys his meal with Jugo. The food served in Nanba prison is better as compared to other prisons and Rock appreciates the chef for cooking a delicious meal. It turns out that the chef was a prisoner in the past, but he was released and he came back to work at the prison as a chef. At this point, Jugo sits and wonders why someone would come voluntarily to work at the prison. After lunch, Jugo holds a Rubik's Cube in his hands and asks what it is. In response, Uno takes the cube from Jugo and shows him how to play with it. Seconds after Jugo gets the cube from Uno, he solves it, leaving the rest of his comrades shocked. Also, Uno hands Jugo a wire puzzle, and Jugo solves the puzzle after some seconds leaving Uno shocked as a result. At this point, Rock realizes how Jugo can get past any security locks, and Nico states that it's a talent, but Rock wonders why Jugo is wasting his talent. Later that day, the inmates are assigned different tasks by their supervisor, Hajime. While at it, Rock and Jugo team up to work on a drawer while the other two work on carving wood materials. After some minutes, Nico displays a carved figure to Hajime, but he gets smacked in the head. Also, Uno displays a similar carved figure to Hajime, and he meets the same fate as Nico. Soon, Jugo and Uno finish working on their furniture, and Hajime looks pleased with the outcome, and Jugo states that the drawers slide out automatically. In an attempt to show Hajime how the drawers work, Jugo presses a button that slams a drawer on Hajime's face. Moving on, Hajime sits in the smoking room and smokes a cigarette. While at it, Seitaru notices something off about Hajime and asks Hajime about it. There, Hajime explains that he is worried about the warden finding out about the inmates. Meanwhile, Jugo appears out of nowhere in the smoking room. At this point, Hajime wonders why Jugo is in the smoking room and then Jugo states that he is bored. As a result, Hajime cuffs Jugo's hand to his to prevent him from escaping. Hours later, Hajime heads out with some files to the warden's office. On his way, he gets on public transport and arrives at the warden's office building after some minutes. On getting to the building, he passes through a bunch of security protocols and arrives at a hall where other supervisors wait to see the warden. Minutes later, Hajime gets into the warden's office and displays the files he promised to give to Momoko concerning the cell 13 inmates. As Hajime tries to give the files to Mokoto, Hajime makes contact with Momoko's hand, and as a result, Momoko seems pleased. After a while, Hajime goes on to explain the reason why the inmates have not tried to escape the facility. While at it, he gives a brief history of the inmates, including their origins, likes, and dislikes, adding possible motives for escaping. When it gets to Jugo's turn, Hajime states that Jugo is Japanese, adding that he was arrested on larceny charges in the past and sent to a juvenile hall, but he escaped the same day. Following that, Hajime explains that Jugo has escaped and been arrested the most when compared to the rest of his comrades. In the end, Hameji states that Jugo has no motive to escape, adding that escaping is just a hobby for Jugo. After Hameji is done with the report, Momoko looks convinced and the meeting comes to an end. At this point, Humeji is suspicious of Jugo, and it turns out that he does not trust him. Hours later, Humeji locks Jugo 
go up again after he escapes from his cell. After some days, Momoko receives a call regarding an escaped convict, and she makes preparations to receive the prisoner. Meanwhile, the notorious prisoner receives info about his transfer. Later that day, Seitarui has issues controlling the inmates of cell 13, and he reports his situation to Hajime. After Hajime becomes aware of the situation, he encourages Seitaru to be confident and lay down the law. Implement the advice he got from Hajime, he gets mocked by Nico and his comrades, and then runs off to meet Hajime. Because of Seitaru's condition, Hajime agrees to teach Seitaru how to handle the inmates of cell 13. During the lecture, Hajime tells Seitaru to use the likes of the inmates to his advantage, so he can decrease their activity levels. When it comes to Jugo, Hajime tells Saitaru that he should make sure that all other inmates are occupied, and if they are, Jugo's activity levels will drop drastically. After the session with Seitaru, Hajime heads out to meet the warden in her office, and when he gets there, he receives info about a new inmate assigned to cell 13. After some minutes, the meeting with the warden comes to an end, and Hajime leaves Momoko's office. After Hajime leaves the office, Momoko's desire for Hajime increases as she looks pleased because Hajime called her name earlier. Minutes later, Hajime arrives at building 13, and Seitaru reveals that he had a good time controlling the inmates thanks to the advice he gave Seitaru earlier. Before Seitaru leaves on an errand, Hajime reveals that a new inmate will be transferred to cell 13, adding that Seitaru should make preparations. After some time, Rock, inmate 69, begins a conversation with his comrades talking about the new inmate to be transferred to their cell. Jugo looks interested in the conversation and Rock's reveals that the inmate will be transferred that afternoon. Minutes later, Hajime opens the cell door and Tsukumo, the new inmate, gets in and introduces him Slef. After Tsukumo introduces him Slef, Hajime leaves the cell while Rock and the others think that Tsukumo is a Japanese ninja because because of how he is dressed. Seconds later, Tsukumo confirms that he is a ninja, and the others except Jugo express happiness because they have never seen a Japanese ninja up close. Afterward, Tsukumo explains that he was arrested because of trespassing, adding that he will not sit in prison. Following that, Tsukumo reveals that he has escaped from many prisons in the past using ninjutsu, and this revelation catches Jugo's attention because he is a jailbreaker also. Soon, Tsukumo suggests a contest against Jugo to determine who is better at jailbreaking and Jugo agrees after kicking Tsukumo to the ground. At midnight, the contest between Tsukumo and Jugo begins, and other inmates of Cell 13 are present to judge the contest. Minutes after the contest begins, Jugo easily gets past security locks and deactivates other security protocols, and after that, they all sense the presence of a security guard coming. Following that, all inmates of Cell 13 hide in a corner, but Hajime arrives at their location and assumes that they all tried to escape. Even as Uno tries to explain that he was not trying to escape, Hajime does not look convinced, and he assumes that they all tried to escape together. Elsewhere, Seitaru sits at a table and checks the surveillance camera recordings, and Yamato, the deputy supervisor, arrives at the scene. While watching the video, Seitaru finds out that Sumuko was conscious of the cameras and assumed weird ninja posts while being recorded in the past. Soon, Hajime arrives at the scene and states that Sumuko will be transferred to Cell 11 the next day. A day before the new year, Yamato arrives at Cell 13 in the morning, and delivers items for the inmates to create the New Year's decorations. Minutes later, Seitaru arrives at the scene with cleaning items stating that they are to begin the end-of-year cleaning. After that, Goku, the supervisor of Building 5, and Hajime arrive at the warden's office to clean it up. As Hajime prepares to clean up the office, he takes up his jacket and rolls up his sleeves while Momoko watches him from a distance. This goes on to a point where Hajime gets to Momoko's table to clean it. While cleaning the table, Hajime sweats rapidly because he is scared of Momoko in close contact. Soon, both super supervisors finish cleaning up the office and they both head out. Later that day, all supervisors engage in a meeting with the warden in preparation for an event beginning the next day. During the meeting, the supervisors argue about who will win the contest coming up. Soon, the meeting comes to an end and after some time, the inmates of Cell 13 listen to the New Year's Eve bell. The following day marks the beginning of a new year, as well as an event to celebrate the new year. That morning, all inmates gather at a field and the warden gives an announcement regarding the prison's traditional event that features a tournament. After some time, Kenshiro Yozakura announces the representatives of different buildings that will contest in the tournament. Before he announces the representatives, Seitaru goes on to explain the concepts of the tournament to Rock and the others stating that a prize is given to the winning building and its guards. And Yamato adds that each inmate will receive any one item that they want. After the inmates get this info from Seitaru and Yamato, 
they expressed their wishes to participate and begged to be allowed in the tournament. During the announcement of each building representative, Cell 13 is called to represent Building 13, but Hajime is not pleased with this. It turns out that Momoko, the warden, had a hand in manipulating the representative of Building 13. Just before the tournament begins, Salmon Goku, Building 5 supervisor, brags about winning the tournament over Hajime, but in response, Hajime states that he does not care about winning the tournament, rather, he cares more about not losing to Goku. Seconds later, other supervisors of different buildings arrive at Hajime's position and brag about winning the tournament. Soon the tournament begins as Mitsuru, Nanba prison broadcaster, announces the name of the first event, which is Kazizomi, a game where the participant with the most beautiful penmanship is the winner. Because Jugo is Japanese, he gets selected by his comrades to represent Cell 13 in the Kazizomi event, but he fails in the contest. However, Cell 13 manages to come out first in the event because of Hajime and Yamato who possess insane penmanship skills over their opponents. After the first event comes to an end, Mitsuru announces the beginning of the second event called Mochi Pounding Daruma Drop, a game that requires power and strength. In this game, the participant who completes pounding his mochi wins, and if the Daruma collapses, the participant loses. Before the event begins, Yamato volunteers to represent Cell 13 as well as Rock, who possesses the strength to participate in such a tasking event. Minutes later, Yamato and Rock arrive at their Daruma and Yamato debriefs Rock about the game. Here, Yamato tells Rock that he should prevent attacks from their opponent so he can finish pounding their mochi to win. Seconds later, the event begins after Mitsuru announces the representatives of the event and Yamato begins to pound his mochi. Along the line, Liang, a representative of Building 5, arrives behind Rock and strikes a layer of block off Rock's Daruma. It turns out that both parties have got history, and Liang intends to settle the score between Rock. Moments later, Rock charges Liang with his mallet to launch an attack on him, but Liang counters his attack and breaks his mallet in the process. At this point, Liang's teammate Inori, a guard, seizes the opportunity to attack Yamato who is still pounding his mochi. While at it, Inori lands an attack on Yamato, but to his surprise, his initial attack gets blocked. During the battle between Liang and Rock, all attacks launched by Liang get dodged by his opponent, Rock. Along the line, Rock reveals that his goal for winning the tournament is to acquire a stone oven. When Rock makes this revelation, Liang looks shocked because Rock craves for something so irrelevant. Although Liang mocks Rock's goal of winning the tournament, Rock takes their battle seriously and blocks a dangerous attack that Liang lands on him easily. However, things do not go smoothly for Liang at this point because he gets spun around and hit with a nasty punch which sets him flying meters away to the ground. The impact of the punch causes Liang to hit a block off his Daruma before he reaches the ground. Meanwhile, after Yamato sees the nature of Liang's defeat, he ends things quickly with Inori as he lands a fatal punch on him which concludes their battle in the process. As a result of Rock's victory as well as Yamato's, Building 13 takes the lead again in the tournament as they come first in the leaderboard. Minutes later, Mitsuru announces the third event, which is Hayakunin Ishu, a game of cards. Following that, Hajime appoints Seitaru to represent Building 13, and for some reason he looks happy to be appointed for the role. The fact that Seitaru gets appointed leaves Rock and the others shocked because they think that Seitaru is good for nothing. Soon, Mitsuru announces the participants from other buildings, and the event begins with Seitaru against Mitsuba, the Building 3 supervisor, and Uno against Trois and Honey, who are both representatives of Building 3. Along the line, Mitsuba underestimates Seitaru's abilities, and he pays deeply for it as Seitaru easily guesses the cards and wins his opponent flawlessly. Now the battle is left in Uno's hands, who has difficulties keeping up with his opponents. After some minutes, Troy switches places with Honey, his teammate, in the event and plays against Uno. Minutes into the game, Troy assumes that Uno has difficulties playing the game because he cannot cheat. As Mitsuba watches his teammate overpower Uno in the game, he quickly assumes that he will win, but Jugo tells him that winning Uno is going to be difficult for some specific reason. While in the third event, Uno begins to overpower his opponent. And as a result, Honey switches places with Troy. Even as Honey continues from where Troy stopped, he gets easily overpowered by Uno, who can predict his move in the game. At this point, Honey gets curious and wonders how Uno is winning so easily, and it turns out that Uno can predict his moves by studying his body language. The same thing goes for Trois, as Uno was able to predict his moves while they were playing earlier. Minutes later, Rock notices Nico's absence, and it turns out that Nico is on his way to see his doctor so he can get medication. While Nico heads to see his doctor, he passes a cell occupied by an inmate, and for some reason, Nico takes a step back. To Nico's surprise, the inmate floats in the air and he looks terrified when he sees this. Meanwhile, Uno reveals his goal for winning the tournament while playing against Troish, 
which is to establish a gambling room where he can play with other opponents. Minutes later, Nico runs off and meets Hajime terrified of what he saw earlier. Even as Nico explains what he saw, Hajime assumes Nico is insane, and after some seconds, Mitsuru announces the fourth event. The fourth event is top spinning, whereby each participant will be required to spin a large object called the top at the center of the stage. Mitsuru explains that if a top either destroys or pushes the other top off the stage, the team with the last top standing wins. He goes ahead to announce the participants of the game featuring Goku as Hajime's opponent. Also, Matusba, the Building 3 supervisor, is put against Kenshiro Yozakura, the Building 4 supervisor. Minutes later, the contest begins, and Goku deploys his teammates to face eye off Hajime and his team. Goku teammates feature two inmates, Chi and Upa, from Cell 8 of Building 5, respectively. It turns out that Upa is the one that Nico saw floating in the air and he tries to persuade Hajime that he exists. Minutes later, the crowd cheers loudly and the contest begins between Hajime and Goku. During the contest, Upa and Chi both head to attack Hajime following Goku's wishes, but on the way, they get interrupted by Nico, who prevents them from attacking Hajime by landing a large metal ball on the ground. Seconds later, Chi leaves the arena with the excuse that he does not like to fight and he lays his back on the floor, leaving Upa alone to face Nico. After that, a battle begins between Nico and Upa, and while at it, Nico tells Upa to teach him how to float like he did in the past. At this point, Upa is surprised that Nico saw him train, and he mocks Nico, stating that an amateur like him cannot use Qigong, Upa's floating technique. Meanwhile, a heated battle between Goku and Hajime is underway, as Goku lands an incredible attack on Hajime, but the attack gets blocked. During their battle, Momoko steers deeply at Hajime and fantasizes about him. Seconds later, Hajime manages to doge a massive chi blast launched by Upa. Even after Nico witnesses Upa's amazing amazing technique. He tells Upa to teach him his technique, and he declines at first. Soon, the battle between Upa and Nico continues, and during their battle, Upa notices that Nico can copy people's skills and use them against others in combat. Also, Jugo confirms this skill of Nico by stating that Nico is influenced by things that look cool and memorizes them instantly. The battle against Nico and Upa goes on till a point where Nico simultaneously dodges all attacks launched by Upa. During their battle, Upa notices that Nico is catching up to him in skill and that NCO's motion is getting sharper. After some time, Nico reveals his intention for winning the tournament, which is to acquire the latest gaming system. After Nico makes his goals clear, Upa listens and attributes Nico's goal as insignificant, then he lands a nasty kick on Nico in the process. Even at that, Nico agrees to become Upa's student only if he wins the battle against Upa. Along the line, Hajime aims to knock his opponent's spinning top off the stage so he can win, but he gets interrupted by Goku, who prevents him from doing so. During the heated battle between Goku and Hajime, Goku assumes that Hajime is hiding something about his inmates in Cell 13, and he tells Hajime that he does not trust him. Bons, Hajime replies saying that he only performs his duty and after he makes this statement, their intense battle continues. Elsewhere, Kenshiro proceeds with his battle with Mitsuba, and he lands an attack on Mitsuba that tosses him to the ground as a result. Back in the battle between Hajime and his opponent, Hajime lands a nasty punch on Goku that causes Goku to spit blood in the process. Upa sends a large chi blast at Nico, and Nico assumes a defensive position to deflect it. When Nico takes his stance, Rock and the others look shocked because they see Nico's hands glow in an attempt to mimic Upa's powers. In split seconds, Nico prepares a chi blast that counters Upa's initial attack and causes an explosion in the process. At this point, Upa lies on the ground as well as Goku, who was just defeated by Hajime. After that, Nico passes out after expending lots of energy and Hajime catches him. Minutes later, Mitsuru announced that the final event of the tournament would be between Building 13 and Building 4. After some hours, Mitsuru barges into the Warden's office to inform Momoko that the final match is about to start. When Mitsuru enters the office, he finds Momoko reading some weird magazine and they both head out to watch the final match. While on the way to watch the final match, Momoko confirms both buildings that are contesting for the final, and it turns out that it is the same as last year. Momko aims to broadcast the match to all the buildings to make the inmates see the power and strength of the officer present in the prison. Elsewhere, Goku sits in a hospital bed, pissed about the fact that he lost to Hajime. Standing beside Goku is Inori, and he speaks of a medicine chi, inmate 71 made that speeds up their recovery. Goku tells Inorui to keep his voice down so that others will not hear of the medicine. It turns out that Gokui had Chi make a drug that will weaken Nico during the tournament, but the drug did not work because Nico is already used to being drugged. Also, Goku stresses the fact that the drug did not affect Hajime while he was in combat with him. He wonders why the drug did not work, and when Goku reveals this info, 
Inori assumes that Hajime might have known of the drug, but Guku thinks that it is a result of Hajime's gut feeling. Meanwhile, Hajime smokes in the smoking room and he looks tired from the battle that happened earlier. Moments later, Mitsuru announces the final event at the arena and the crowd cheers loudly. Soon, the warden Momoko debriefs the crows and announces the game for the final event, which is the sake barrel opening. Moving on, Momoko explains the rules of the game, stating that the person who manages to open the specially made sake barrel first wins. After Momoko is done explaining the rules of the game, Game, Jugo is forced to represent Cell 13 by his comrades. Meanwhile, Yamato volunteers to represent Cell 13 alongside Jugo and Hajime agrees with his decision. Along the line, Kenshiro does not like the fact that Hajime is not representing Building 13, and as such, he convinces Hajime to participate in the finals, adding that he wants to battle Hajime in the final event. Although Hajime is tired from his last battle, he agrees to represent Building 13 over Yamato after some minutes of persuasion from Kenshiru. It turns out that Kenshiru has a thing for Momoko, and he intends to win Hajime to prove that he is the one suited for her. Minutes later, the participants assemble at the arena, and Kenshiru deploys his teammate to go after Jugo while he handles Hajime himself. When Jugo sees his opponent, he looks shocked and it turns out that they have got history. Before the battle begins, Jugo tells Hajime that Musashi was his cellmate in a prison in the past. Soon, the final event begins, and Jugo takes a hit from Musashi, while Hajime chases after the sake barrel, looks drained after blocking the attack. Musashi is an inmate who fights with a blindfold on, and Rock, who watches from a distance, assumes that Musashi's senses are sharp. During the final event, Kenshiro manages to prevent Hajime from getting to the sake barrel by using a long whip to hold Hajime's hand. Minutes later, Hajime frees him left from Kenshiro's rope and proceeds to attack Kenshiro. Their battle goes on to a point where Hajime deploys a gun and aims it at Kenshiro. It turns out that Hajime got the gun from a toolbox present at the battle arena, and the gun contains rubber bullets. In an attempt to charge after Hajime, Kenshiro gets shot at by several rubber bullets launched by Hajime. As Hajime wields his weapon with style, Momoko fantasizes about Hajime likening him to a legendary sniper. Afterward, Rock and his comrades observe that Jugo is not doing well in his battle against Musashi. During the battle against Musashi, Jugo gets tossed to a wall and he looks exhausted at this point. It turns out that Musashi is blind because Jugo took his sight in the past. As time goes on, Hajime fights with Kenshiro to the point where Kenshiro leans to the floor after taking several hits from Hajime. Even at this point, Kenshiro still had the zeal to win the match, and he vows not to give up. With the desire for Momoko at stake, Kenshiro deploys an invisible attack that lands Hajime on the floor after some seconds. Meanwhile, Jugo gets a beating from Musashi, and blood flows from his head in the process. At this point, Musashi assumes that Jugo is holding back for some reason, and he asks Jugo to give him his shackles. Seconds later, Kenshiro attempts the same attack on Hajime, but this time Hajime finds a way to dodge the attack and land a nasty punch on Kenshiro. After Kenshiro falls to the ground, he wonders how Hajime was able to get past his invisible attack while the crowd cheers in favor of Hajime. Furthermore, Jugo has his back against a wall and Musashi demands to get Jugo's shackles from him. Along the line, Jugo realizes that Musashi knows the person responsible for putting the shackles on him, and his mood changes in the process. After that, Jugo violently demands to know how Musashi possesses such knowledge, and as S result, Jugo begins to fight furiously. Seconds later, Musashi aims a fire blast at Jugo that sets him falling meters away from Musashi. The fact that Musashi can wield fire shocks Goku and some others, because it is a rare skill possessed by humans. As Jugo lies defeated on the floor, the thought of finding the man responsible for his shackles makes him transform into another version of himself. This version of Jugo is deadly, as his hands form two double-edged swords at the scene. Some hours earlier, Yamato informed Tsukumo, inmate 99, that he had a visitor. On getting to the visitor's room, Tsukumo turns his back to get back to his cell because he does not want to see Hattori, the visitor, but Hattori insists on seeing inmate 99. He enters into a conversation with Hattori. It turns out that Tsukumo is an actor, and because of his disappearance, Hattori, Tsukumo's manager, made up a report about Tsukumo going missing. It turns out that Hattori lied to the press about Tsukumo missing because he did not want the public to find out that a famous actor was in jail. Also during the conversation with Tsukumo, Hattori states that everyone will be happy to receive Tsukumo back, adding that people are offering more acting jobs now more than ever. Before Hattori gets to complete his statement, Tsukumo rebukes him telling him that he is not interested adding that he does not want to continue his career even if it means fabricating the truth. Even as Tsukumo makes this statement, Hattori does not agree with him and as such still wants him to come back. Elsewhere, a cat named Ku wonders and meets Jugo in Building 13. As Jugo picks up the cat, 
He overhears the conversation between Tsukumo and Hattori, and then gets to the visitor's room door to listen more. Back in the visitor's room, Tsukumo states that he knows what happened to him in the past, referring to Hattori as a kidnapper. Also, Tsukumo reveals that his director took everything away from him, and it turns out that the director is Tsukumo's mother, or at least was. It all started some years in the past when Tsukumo's director wanted to make a ninja movie that would shake the movie industry. However, to achieve this result, she required an actual ninja, even if ninjas are rare or do not exist. When the director made her intentions clear, she set out to a small village with Hattori to find a potential ninja. On getting to the shinobi village, Hattori and the director spend hours looking for a ninja, and after some moments of searching, they see a young boy training on how to use ninja stars. After a couple of attempts, the boy fails to hit his target, and he weeps as a result. At this point, the director moves towards the boy, and she finds out that the boy is training to become a ninja. A conversation between the director and the young boy, the boy reveals that his parents are gone, and he does not remember what they look like. After the director gets this info, she uses it to her advantage and acts like the boy's mother, fooling the boy to believe that she is his mother. It turns out that the young boy is Tsukumo, and he was raised by the director to become an actor from that time. After some months go by, Hattori is worried that the director is still posing to be Tsukumo's mother even after Tsukumo has forgotten that he is a real shinobi, a ninja. In response, the director states that she only raised Tsukumo to discover his talent and in the process, she taught him everything she knows. Back in real time, Jugo still listens to Tsukumo's narration from behind the door, and Hattori confirms the story. Even after listening to the story, Hattori claims that the director gave Tsukumo a good life and cultivated his talent which brought him fame and glory, adding that Tsukumo has no right to criticize the director who raised him. However, it turns out that Hattori was jealous of the fact that the director raised Tsukumo to the point where he amassed so my money and fame. Also, Hattori reveals that he watched as Tsukumo was the one loved and wanted by the director. Their conversation then heads to a part where Hattori asks Tsukumo what he will have left if he quits acting. Soon, Tsukumo leaves the visitor's room and sees that Jugo is just sitting behind the door. After Jugo sees what Tsukumo's actual ace looks like, Tsukumo becomes self-aware and puts his ninja mask back on trying to stay in character. Meanwhile, Jugo sees through his actions and tells him to stop the act. Soon, both parties enter into a conversation where Tsukumo reveals that he cannot do anything besides acting. Towards the end of the conversation, Jugo tells Tsukumo to be himself, adding that no one will force him to act or treat him differently. After Tsukumo receives the advice from Jugo, he thinks deeply about it as Jugo walks away with Ku, the cat. Back in real time, Jugo looks dangerous with the doubled-edged sword attached to his hands as he faces Musashi in battle. At this point, the shackles on his neck, hand, and feet look to be gone, and Jugo carries a serious look on his face with red glowing eyes. Moments later, Jugo attempts an attack on Musashi, but his opponent dodges the attack while Rock and the others pay the price as the effect of the attack gets to them. Because Jugo's attack managed to get to the spectators, the prison begins evacuating the inmates from the battle arena, and Momko orders that the cameras be stopped. Meanwhile, a heated battle between Jugo and Musashi goes on till a point where Jugo lands an attack on Musashi that destroys another part of the battle arena. At this point, Momko notices the change in Jugo, as well as the fact that his shackles have changed into blades, and she wonders who Jugo is. After some time, Momoko gives the order that both Musashi and Jugo be apprehended. After she gives the order, some supervisors proceed to stop Musashi but they get blasted by Musashi's fire attack. When Hajime arrives close to the battlefield, Musashi summons fire which prevents Hajime and his colleagues from getting closer, while Musashi intends to burn Jugo to ashes so he can obtain his shackles. With the battle going on at this rate, Yamato reveals to Nico and the others that Jugo will go to trial if he does not stop fighting. Back on the battlefield, Kenshiru arrives and tries to prevent Musashi from fighting, ordering Musashi to power down in the process. Although Musashi receives a warning from Kenshiro, he summons a fireball at Kenshiro to prevent him from interfering in his battle. Seconds later, Hajime proceeds again to the battlefield accompanied by Kenshiro and some other supervisors including Goku and Mitsuba to apprehend Musashi and Jugo. Furthermore, all supervisors present at the battlefield engage Musashi except Hajime, who proceeds to apprehend Jugo single-handedly. Now it is three against one in Musashi's situation. Along the line, Kenshiro prepares an aerial attack while Goku uses his weapon to restrain Musashi, preventing him from using his fire powers. Seconds later, Mitsuba lands the finishing touch by using her weapon to restrain Musashi, preventing him from moving or escaping. Now that Musashi has been apprehended, the ball is left in Hajime's court as he tries to fight and defeat Jugo. During their battle, 
Hajime fires countless bullets at Jugo, but Jugo manages to block them all. At this point, Hajime reveals that he was right to be suspicious of Jugo, and then he states that he will make Jugo spill his secrets. Moments later, Hajime shoots another set of bullets at Jugo, but Jugo slices the bullets into halves. Nico, Ryok, and Uno who watch the battle between Jugo and Hajime assume that Jugo is flawless, Nico wonders why Jugo is fighting. After some minutes, Rock charges at Jugo with Nico and Uno to stop Jugo from fighting. Even when they manage to grab Jugo's limbs, their combined effort is not enough to subdue Jugo. And as a result, Jugo easily overpowers them and toss them to the ground. After Jugo throws his comrades to the ground, he asks for the whereabouts of the person who put the shackles on his body and proceeds to harm Uno with his blade. Just before Jugo lands an attack on Uno with his blade, Hajime arrives just in time to prevent Uno from imminent death by stopping Jugo's blade with his fist. Furthermore, Hajime lands a nasty punch on Jugo that causes blood to come out from Jugo. He's mouth while Uno begs Hajime telling him that he is taking the battle too far. At this point, Hajime ignores Uno and lands a series of punches on Jugo's face that leaves Jugo bleeding as a result. Even as Jugo bleeds, Hajime keeps punching him, and then Momoko, the warden, orders Hajime to stop. Hours later, Hajime sits in the smoking room and Goku complains about Hajime's fighting methods against Jugo. It turns out that Jugo lies unconscious because of Hajime, and Mitsuba claims that the tournament was ruined by Hajime's actions. Hours earlier, Hajime completed the last task and won the tournament over Goku and the others. Back in real time, Mitsuru arrives with a letter for Hajime only to find out that Hajime just left the smoking room. Along the line, Hajime arrives at his building and gets to sell 13. When he arrives there, Uno and the others express their rage towards Hajime for putting Jugo in a critical condition. After some time, Hajime accepts that he went too far on Jugo, and he leaves the cell almost immediately. Minutes later, Mitsuru arrives at Hajime's location and hands him a letter from the warden. When Hajime hears the content of the letter from Mitsuru's mouth, he finds out that he has been suspended for three days and he looks shocked following the warden's decision. Meanwhile, Momoko, the warden, weeps in her office following her actions against Hajime, her crush. After three days, Hajime arrives at the prison marking the end of his suspension. Minutes after assuming duty, Hajime bumps into Kenshiro while walking on a walkway, and he appreciates Kenshiro for taking care of things while he was on suspension. Along the line, Kenshiro reveals that Jugo, inmate 15, is awake, and then Hajime reveals that he was just about to go and interrogate him. Minutes into the conversation with Kenshiro, he reveals that Musashi is in an underground prison in Building 4, adding that Musashi said he will not answer any questions until he gets to talk to Jugo. Because of that, Kenshiro hands Hajime a walkie-talkie to facilitate communication between Jugo and Musashi so that they can both decipher what is going on between them. Soon their conversation comes to an end, and Kenshiro heads to Musashi's cell and drops a walkie-talkie for him so he can use it to communicate with Jugo. Also, Hajime arrives at Jugo's cell and drops a walkie-talkie there so he can listen to Jugo's conversation with Musashi. A conversation begins between Jugo and Musashi regarding the person responsible for planting the shackles on Jugo. A conversation, Musashi reveals that he is also looking for the person behind the shackles and then Jugo states that the only thing he knows about the man is that he has a scar on his neck. After Jugo reveals his intention for finding the man which is to take off his shackles, Musashi laughs at Jugo because he took his other form earlier for such an absurd wish. Afterward, Jugo gets curious and asks why Musashi wants his shackles badly, and in response, Musashi replies stating that the shackles are just a way to get closer to the man, adding that his objective is to find the man with the scar, and kill him. Furthermore, Musashi reveals that he suffered in the past because of his powers, and the man with the scar showed up after some time offering to ease his suffering. It turns out that the man had other wishes in mind because he used Musashi for his research. Also, Musashi adds that the shackles are of the man's technology, which is by far superior as compared to others. Minutes later, Musashi reveals that the man made him a monster by making him able to control fire freely under the guise that he will become better. At that time in the past, when Musashi got fooled by the man with the scar, Musashi got upset and tried to burn the man with his fire, but to his surprise, the man cut through his flame with a sword and landed an attack on Musashi, spilling blood on the ground in the process. Back in real time, Musashi reveals that the man has the same shackles as Jugo, and Musashi reveals that he wants the shackles so he can defeat the man. At this point, Musashi explains that if he gets to kill the man, he will happily walk to the gallows himself, but he then reveals that he is in no condition to defeat the man, because he has lost access to his powers because of a chip that the doctors put inside him earlier. Although Musashi does not have access to his powers anymore, he does not give up on killing the man, 
but Jugo wonders why Mushashi reveals the information about his powers at this time. Seconds later, their conversation comes to an end as Musashi ends the call. Now, Jugo is left in the cell with Hajime, and they both enter into a conversation where Hajime reveals that Jugo is empty. Minutes into their conversation, Hakime reveals that he has been monitoring Jugo for some time, suspecting that he had an ulterior motive, but it proved to be unfounded. However, Jugo gets curious and asks if there is something that other humans have that he lacks, and then Hajime replies by saying greed. Hajime proves his theory by stating that Jugo cannot find out the reason Musashi told him the story earlier. Soon, Hajime adds that Jugo has no idea what to do in his current situation, but Jugo counters by asking if he is pursuing the man with the scar because he has nothing better to do. Minutes later, Jugo worries about the fact that his comrades saw his nether form, and he assumes that things will not go back to normal when he meets them. At a certain point, Jugo gets confused as to why he came to Namba prison at first, and after some time, he begs Hajime asking him what he should do. Because Building 13 won the last tournament, Hajime asks Jugo what he wants as a reward, and he gives him a five-minute window to answer the question, adding that once the five minutes window is over, he will cease to be in charge of Jugo, and Jugo will not be an inmate of Building 13. During the five-minute window, Jugo gets a hard time thinking about what he wants, and after some time, the five-minute window comes to an end. Just when Hajime is about to leave, Jugo begs Hajime stating that he should give him one more chance, and then Hajime throws a tag for Jugo. After that, Hajime states that if Jugo picks up the tag, he will return to cell 13, adding that things will not be the same as before. Even though Jugo is in chains, he easily breaks through the chains and picks up the tag accepting Hajime's offer in the process. Three days ago, while Hajime was on suspension, Kenshiro took over duty from Hajime as the Building 13 supervisor, and the inmates of Cell 13 were terrified of the new development. It turns out that the change was a result of Momoko, who set aside Goku, Kenshiro, and Mitsuba to assume authority over Building 13 on different days due to Hajime's suspension. Back in Cell 13, Uno and the others, excluding Jugo, find out that Hajime was suspended, and they are happy about it. Later that day, Nico proceeds to his regular medical checkups while Uno and Rock join him. On the way, Kenshiro gets curious and asks why Rock and Uno are following Nico, and they both reply, stating that Hajime lets them. On getting to the infirmary, Nico sees his doctor, Okina Otogi, attending to Honey and Truss, both opponents that Uno defeated in the tournaments. It turns out that both Truss and Honey are seeing Otogi, the head doctor, for some absurd injury that is not noticeable. Soon, NCO requests to collect his medication, but Otogi suggests that he run an examination first to check for any lingering effects from the tournament. It turns out that Nico gets infected by people as he can mimic people regardless of their physical abilities, muscle strength, or experience. The fact that Nico has this ability puts a lot of strain on his body, and he could die if he uses a master level technique like Qigong, the skill he used earlier against Upa in the tournament. At this point, the doctor explains that the medication he gives Nico prevents him from being infected by others, and Nico apologies for missing his previous dose. Minutes later, a robot assistant walks in with some medication for the doctor, and due to the nature of the robot's build, Uno and the others rush to gain the attention of the robot, asking the robot pervy questions in the process. The following day, Mitsuba takes over duty from Ken Shiru and supervises Building 13 for the day. When the inmates of Cell 13 get this information, Info, they look terrified, and Mitsuba wonders why. Since Jugo is not present in the cell, Uno and the others feel sad, and they wonder if Jugo is alright. Soon, the inmates begin with their activities for the day, and after some time, Mitsuba gives a lecture on the layout of the entire prison. During the lecture, Mitsuba displays a map of Nanba prison and begins to illustrate each part of the map. Soon the lecture comes to an end, and Mitsuba gets into a heated argument that attracts Seitaru to the cell because of the noise. The following day, Goku takes over the duty of building 13 from Mitsuba, and before he arrives at Cell 13, he assumes that Hajime is hiding something about the inmates of Cell 13 and he hopes to find out what it is with his eyes. When Goku arrives at Cell 13, he finds the inmates sleeping past the time they are supposed to wake up, and as a result he gets furious, but Seitaru tries to calm him down. When Uno and the others discover that Goku is in their cell, they all hide in plain sight. Seconds later, Goku easily finds the inmates and takes them out of their hiding spots. Minutes later, Yamato arrives at the cell and Tsukumo arrives seconds after Yamato. At this point, Yamato intends to take the inmates out for intense training, but the inmates do not want to train. In an attempt to avoid training, Uno and the others make up a story where Jugo is dead, and because of that, Yamato believes and lets the inmate mourn Jugo's fake death. Meanwhile, Goku sees through this act and makes Yamato take the inmates for intense training. Uno, Rock, and Nico perform lots of push-ups following Goku's wishes, 
While at it, Uno wishes for Jugo to recover swiftly. Meanwhile, Hajime volunteers to construct a building in his spare time during his suspension period. Back in real time, Jugo gets released from the isolated cell, and he follows Hajime back to cell 13. On arriving in cell 13, Uno and the others are happy to see Jugo, and after some time, Jugo apologizes for his behavior at the tournament. In the process of apologizing, Jugo gets on his knees and begs for forgiveness. Following that, Uno and the others forgive Jugo, and he weeps in the process. Meanwhile, Hajime, who watches everything from outside the cell, has a weird smirk on his face. Later that day, the warden receives word that Hajime is coming to see her, and she fantasizes about Hajime for some seconds. Mitsuru, who is aware of Momoko's crush, enters Momoko's office without permission and carries a picture of Hajime attached to his face to tease Momoko. When Hajime gets to the warden's office, he sees Mitsuru lying unconscious on the ground and assumes that Momoko wants to kill him, but Momoko makes matters worse by having a weird smile on her face. As a result, Hajime submits his report quickly on Momoko's table and runs out of the office with his life intact. On a certain night, while all the inmates of Cell 13 are asleep and snoring, Rock has a nightmare of his past. In his dream, his father calls him a disgrace and later that day, he assaults an unknown civilian and ends up in jail. Back in real time, Rock wakes up to see that Jugo is watching him. As a result of Rock's sleeping pattern, Jugo is concerned and asks if Rock is okay, yet Rock replies that he is fine while faking a smile. The following morning, Liang trains intensely in his cell, while Upa, his cellmate, tells him not to train in the cell. Liang's excuse for training is that he lost to Rock in the tournament that took place days ago, and he intends to get stronger to win next time. Inori drops info for Liang telling him that Rock wants to see him. Minutes later, Liang is seated at a table with Uno and the others, except Nico, while Rock offers him pizza. Rock intends for Liang to eat the pizza badly because it was cooked with the stone oven he got after winning the tournament. Seated beside Liang is Inori, who does not hesitate to eat the pizza that Rock offers him. When Inori gets a bite of the pizza, he realizes that it is delicious, and this makes Liang have a bite of Rock's pizza. After Liang tastes the pizza, he finds out that it is delicious, and Rock goes on to explain the nature of the pizza. Rock, who is pretty hyped about sharing his especially cooked pizza, explains that the stone oven makes everything different about the pizza, beginning with the aroma, texture, and other notes noticeable features. Soon, Shiro serves a Chinese dish at the table, and Liang takes a bite and finds out that it is delicious. Liang has never really enjoyed the pleasure of eating food because he always sees it as a source of energy intake necessary for his body and training. Soon, Liang apologizes for what he did in the past at the last tournament for mocking his Rock's goal of winning. After Liang is done with his meal, he appreciates Rock for the food and leaves the table immediately. After Liang departs the table, Jugo makes a comment stating that Rock has changed, and then in response, Rock states that he changed because he met Jugo. In the past, while Rock was in jail, he was refused food for a night, and Jugo took pity on him and offered him his bread. To Jugo's surprise, Rock refused the bread stating that he does not eat crappy food, and because of that, Jugo broke him out of jail. After both parties leave jail, Jugo takes Rock to a restaurant so he can have a nice meal. Back in real time, Rock remembers how Jugo helped him, but Jugo does not seem to remember. Elsewhere, Nico lies on a hospital bed, and the robot assistant arrives at his position to check on him. Soon, Uno, Rock, and Jugo arrive at the clinic to see Jugo, and they offer him food too. On seeing his comrades, Nico gets excited and appreciates them for the food. Minutes later, the doctor and his wife, Kazari Otogi, get into a heated argument where they both consider divorce at the end of their conversation. After the situation at the clinic, Jugo and the others head to a game room desired by Nico as a result of winning the tournament. It turns out that Kazari, the doctor's wife, is responsible for the entire setup, and Nico is excited that he has a lot of games to choose from. She reveals that she made a special game for Nico, adding that she will give it to him after a final check. Seconds later, Hajime assures Kazari that he will watch the inmates so that nothing goes wrong in the gaming room. Minutes after Kazari leaves, Nico asks a favor of Hajime, and after some time, Upa is present in the gaming room. However, Nico wants Upa to play games with him, and Upa looks shocked that he was summoned by Nico to the gaming room. Minutes later, Jugo and the others see Upa's cellmate, Chi, who was sleeping during the tournament. It doesn't take long for Rock to realize that Chi came to the gaming room just so he can skip training. Along the line, Goku meets up with Hajime and assumes that he is responsible for bringing his inmates to the gaming room. Soon, they both get into a heated argument, but Kazari smacks both of them in the head, causing their argument to end immediately. Back in the gaming room, Nico invites Jugo to come play a game with him, and Jugo gets a hard time playing the game because he does not know how to play. Because of that, Uno and the others jokingly mock him, and Uno supports him in playing the game. After a while of playing in the gaming room, Nico receives his special gaming device from Kazari. Kazari then states that the gaming device contains lots of games integrated with present-day technology. 
and Nico appreciates her for the device. When Nico gets the gaming device, Jugo is present, and after Kazari leaves, they both enter into a conversation where Nico states that he likes games and he wants to be lively because of Jugo. Some years ago, Nico was held up in prison and restrained by chains on a bed. When Jugo saw Nico in his state, he took pity on him and destroyed his chains, offering Nico some comic books to read. Back in real time, Nico states that he wants to live again, thanks to Jugo, and then Jugo asks Nico to teach him how to play games. Uno and the clothes see Musashi passing by with Kenshiro, and they head to his position. Along the line, Musashi bows and apologizes for what he did to Jugo in the past, and then Uno quickly forgives him and makes amends with him in the process. Before Musashi was allowed to get to the gaming room, he made a deal with Kenshiro where he would reveal the details of his past. In the past, when Musashi was a baby, his body temperature was slightly higher than normal, but his mother used to smile saying that his body was warm like the sun. After some years, Musashi experienced intense heat that burned his throat and as a result, he was taken to the hospital. Even at the hospital, the doctors were not able to find out what was wrong with Musashi, although his test results came back normal. After the incident, Musashi suffered from nightmares where he saw himself engulfed in flames. At a point in time at school when Musashi was beginning to forget about his situation, he went up in flames on the school premises, making other students terrified. Following that, Musashi was taken to the hospital, and the doctors found out that he was suffering from spontaneous human combustion. It was a miracle that Musashi survived because his entire body was burned. Even though Musashi was abnormal, his parents were kind to him and they took care of him, and this made Musashi face his fears and desire to live. When Musashi got back to school, a blonde-haired student mocked him, and the rest of the students assumed that Musashi wanted to set the school on fire in the past. In spite of the fact that Musashi tried to convince the students to believe his story, the students did not believe Musashi, and because of that, Musashi realized that he would not be treated as a normal student. One evening, Musashi arrives at his home and finds the building on fire with his parents still inside. Soon, the blonde-haired guy from school accuses Musashi of setting his house on fire, and as a result, police officers try to take him for questioning. At this time, Musashi begs stating that he will never harm his parents, but the officers do not listen to him, and because of that, Musashi gets enraged and gets engulfed in flames. Because of that, Blondie could prove that Musashi set his house on fire. However, following the incident, Musashi gets locked up in jail, and in real time, he reveals to Kenshiro that he was relieved when he was locked up in jail. Minutes later, Musashi reveals that he met the guy with the scar on his neck, adding that the man promised to fix him. Instead, the man turned Musashi into a monster all for his research. Kenshiro asks for more information, and Musashi goes on to explain what happened. In the past, after the man's experiment was successful, Musashi found out that Blondie from school was there in the lab. Along the line, Musashi finds out that Blondie is responsible for spreading fake rumors about him in school, and also for setting his house on fire and killing his parents. When Musashi becomes aware of Blondie's deeds, he gets enraged and grabs Blondie on his neck, questioning him on why he did what he did. In response, Blondie states that it was all for research, adding that he came up with the idea to use prison inmates as test subjects for their experiments since society does not care about prisoners. It is at this point that Musashi tries to kill the man behind the experiments, but he fails after getting a fatal cut on his body. Back in real time, Musashi rounds up his story by stating that the prison was burned to the ground, and none of the experimental data survived, adding that Kenshiro does not have proof to show Kenshiro. After that, Musashi reveals that his desire to kill the man with the scar will never fade. Soon, the discussion between Kenshiro and Musashi gets to a point where Kenshiro reveals that he heard rumors of inmates being used for human experiments. It turns out that Kenshiro was a policeman before, and he did his research on the subject. Although Kenshiro submitted countless reports to his superiors, his superiors rejected them in the past and because of that he assumed that the entire organization was hiding something. Following that, Kenshiro reveals that he became a correctional officer so that he could investigate various prisons. At this point, Kenshiro stresses the fact that he cannot condone inmates being used as human experiments, adding that the act is grossly immoral. He vows to expose the truth in his way to obtain justice. As Musashi watches Kenshiro reveal his intentions, he notices that Kenshiro gets pretty heated when he stresses about justice and then states that Kenshiro is more fired up than he is. Soon their conversation comes to an end when Kenshiro promises to find the truth behind the experimentation in various prisons. Later that day, Uno invites Honey and some others to his gambling room. There, Mitsuru arrives and finds out that the room is empty. With everyone present, Uno states that they will all create the room together so that they can have fun and play bets with other guys. After some minutes of combined effort, Uno's gaming room is all set, and he looks excited that the room is complete. Minutes later, Kenshiro arrives at Uno's gaming room with Musashi and joins up with Uno. Following that, they all play games together, 
and after some time, Hajime announces that they should all go back to their cells. Uno and the others, upon hearing this, express shock because they just arrived at the gaming room not long ago yet. Hajime reveals that they can only spend an hour in the gaming room daily. When Uno and the others hear that they only have an hour to play in the gaming room per day, they all begin to complain, but Hajime gives them a quick beating that reverts them to normal. Later that night, Jugo has trouble sleeping, and Uno notices this. After that, Uno tries to cheer Jugo up, and after some time, Jugo steps outside his cell to get some air. When he gets outside Building 13, he leans on a rail and thinks deeply to himself. While at it, Blondie taps Jugo from his back and mutters some words, asking Jugo what is funny. Later that night, as Blonid arrives at Jugo's position, Jugo looks confused and wonders who Blondie is. Blondie states that they used to play together all the time, and when Blondie states this, Jugo turns his back to face Blondie, stating that he does not know who he is. Soon, Blondie mysteriously appears in front of Jugo and takes out a dagger from Jugo's abdomen. At this point, Jugo sees his blood and feels the pain of the bagger, but the stab wound completely heals, as if it was not there in the first place. Following that, Jugo gets curious about his situation and wonders if Blondie is human. Soon, Blondie enters into a conversation with Jugo, where Jugo finds out that he knows about the man with the scar, and also about his shackles. Soon, Blondie begins to mock Jugo because he cannot control his other form, and Jugo gets upset when he gets addressed as Specimen 15. Minutes later, Jugo states that he knows nothing of his memories, adding that he has no intentions of harming anyone with his shackles. Also, he states that Blondie should take him to the man with the scar, if he knows where he is. Just before Jugo is done completing his statement, Blondie charges at him and such a way that makes him fall to the ground. Following that, Blondie pierces Jugo's hands and places his hands on Jugo's mouth, preventing him from speaking. After that, Blondie threatens to take Jugo's brain and then he proceeds to use a surgical marker to draw a path that he will use to cut through Jugo's skin. Seconds later, Jugo starts shaking and breathing heavily because his life is on the light. As Jugo struggles for his life, Blondie holds him in place and places his blade close to Jugo's skin to cut. However, with the thought of survival on Jugo's mind, he looks terrified because Blondie pierced his skin, and then he transforms his right hand into a sword and slices through Blondie's blade in the process. When Jugo gets free of Blondie, he notices that his wounds are healed as if they were not present, although he saw his blood flowing out. Before Blondie leaves the scene, he reveals to Jugo that he came to check his status and also collect a new body. When Jugo gets this info from Blody, he realizes that his friends are in danger, and as a result, he prepares a large energy blast for Blondie. Just before the beam blast gets completed, Blondie orders Jugo to stop adding that he is going to leave. After that, Blondie ups into the ocean, leaving Jugo all by himself. Seconds later, Jugo gets on his knees just beside the rails and thinks deeply about the safety of his friends. While Jugo thinks deeply about his friends, Hajime finds Jugo outside and moves towards his position. When Jugo becomes aware of Hajime's presence, he drops his hands and states that he is afraid of tomorrow. Later that night, Jugo is present in his cell where the other inmates are in a conversation. Hours later, they all fall asleep, and Jugo tries to sneak out of the cell. Just when he is about to leave, Uno and the others wake up and join him to break out of the prison. Soon the alarm gets triggered as they all try to escape and security guards storm into the building. Along the line, security protocols get triggered to restrict the movement of the inmates trying to escape. Soon, Jugo and the others arrive at the last door that leads out of the prison. In no time, Jugo opens the locks of the door and Hajime stands between him and his freedom. Moving on, Jugo triggers a cage that prevents Uno, Rock, and Nico from getting out and he proceeds to face Hajime on his own. It looks as if Jugo has a death wish at this point because he intends to fight Hajime in close quarters without help from his comrades. Soon, a heated battle begins between Hajime and Jugo as Jugo transforms one of his hands into a sword to fight Hajime. Seconds into their battle, Jugo barely keeps up with Hajime because he only uses a single sword to fight, and as a result, he transforms his other hand to level the fighting gap between him and his opponent. Seitarui arrives at the scene, and Uno begs him to lift the cage so that they can stop Jugo from fighting, but Seitaru declines. At this point, Jugo is pretty serious about defeating Hajime because if he remains in jail, his friends' lives are in danger. Meanwhile, Hajime is hell-bent on not letting Jugo escape and lands a nasty punch on Jugo. Meanwhile, Jugo takes the full effect of in the punch and lands a counter-attack on Hajime. Meanwhile, Seitaru opens the cage and lets Uno and the others out so that they can stop Jugo from fighting. One thing leads to another, and Uno prevents Jugo from landing an attack on Hajime. In the process, Uno and the others are successful in preventing Jugo from fighting, and the battle with Hajime comes to an end. After that, Uno and the others get into an argument regarding Jugo's actions, and Hajime gives all of them a beating, telling them to settle matters in their cell. The following day, Jugo accepts his fate and decides to protect his friends, apologizing to them in the end. Days after Jugo's battle with Hajime, he escapes from his cell, and as a result, 
Hajime and Seitaru proceed to find him. Along the line, Hajime finds Jugo sleeping peacefully in a room and wakes him up with a nasty blow to the head. After Jugo regains consciousness, Hajime threatens him and takes him back to cell 13. At the warden's office, Momoko puzzles about what she will do about Jugo's escape attempt that happened days in the past. After some minutes of thinking, she remembers that Hajime is on his way to come see her, and she wonders what she will say to him to begin their conversation. Along the line, Mitsuru appears in front of Momoko, teasing her with a picture of Hajime, but he quickly pays the price for messing with the warden as he gets beaten to the ground. Minutes later, Hajime arrives at the warden's office and finds Momoko covered in blood. Even though Momoko tries to give off a cool vibe, Hajime feels terrified as he sees Mitsuru lying unconscious on the ground and then runs away before he completes his report. Afterward, Seitaru unboxes a device that will assist him in cleaning the environment. After Seitaru activates the device, it goes freely to a point where it bumps into Hajime's feet. Hajime, who is having a bad day at this point, smashes the device to bits and proceeds with his day. Moving on, Chi tries to get a cactus plant from Upa in Building 5, and he tries all means to get it. Even though Chi proposes to take care of the cactus plant, Upa still declines to give him the plant. Rather, Upa lets Chi touch him while he is watering the plant. Elsewhere, Tsukumo, Honey, and Troy play eight ball in Uno's gambling room. While playing the game, Honey asks Tsukumo if he is the main character of a popular ninja movie, but Tsukumo lies saying that he is just a ninja, adding that Honey is mistaken. Soon their conversation goes on to a point where Honey finds out the truth about Tsukumo, but promises to keep his mouth shut if only Tsukumo signs an autograph for him. Later that day, Hajime smokes in a room where smoking is prohibited, and when Mitsuru observes this, he blows hot and warns Hajime to stop smoking, adding that the scent of the smoke might mess up his beautiful hair. Also, Mitsuba proceeds to warn Goku because he is eating while doing paperwork. It seems Mitsuba is having a bad day because he looks irritated by the slightest misconduct in the prison at that time. Back in cell 13, Uno Rock and the other comrades rest in their cells. While at it, Jugo looks bored, and Nico reads comic books, leaving Uno almost asleep. Minutes later, Hajime proceeds to the guard room and meets Ku, the guard cat there. After that, he carries Ku, and after some time, Yuamato and Seitarao report to the guard room. While in the guard room, Seitaro realizes that he is outranked by the cat because the cat was in the prison way before he became a correctional officer. Moving on, Rock holds Ku to himself in cell 13, while Juigo and the others look worried that Rock brought the cat to their cell. Along the line, Jugo makes contact with the cat as well as Nico, and Jugo's head transforms into a cat head. Meanwhile, Goku submits a report about his building to the warden, and after he is done with submitting the report, the warden rubs his head because Goku is not as tall while Kenshiro watches from a distance with an angry look on his face. After that, Kenshiro wonders why he became so tall in the first place because he thinks that if he was as tall as Goku, the warden would have loved to rub his head. While hitting his head on the wall, Musashi who watches Kenshiro from his cell quickly realizes that Kenshiro has a thing for the warden. At this point, he reveals that he knew this from the last tournament, adding that Kenshiro is easy to read. Later that afternoon, Leon challenges Goku to a battle but Goku declines, stating that he has a lot of work to do. After that, a conversation begins between Goku, Leon, and Inori about a battle. And in the end, things do not end well for Inori, because he gets punched pretty hard in the face. At the clinic in the prison, Jugo is back to normal while Uno looks happy that Jugo lost his cat head. Minutes later, Troas and Honey head into the clinic and ask the robot assistant some pervy questions about her underwear. After some time, Dr. Adagi notices something weird about Nico's hair, and Nico confirms that something is going to happen. Minutes later, Uno and Rock forcefully make Jugo make contact with Nico, but nothing happens at first. Seconds later, Uno notices his hair color change as well as Jugo and the others present in the room and as a result, everyone freaks out except Nico, who remains calm. Also, the effect of Nico's powers reaches everyone in the prison as Liang and the others notice that their hair color has changed too. Later that day, when Uno and the others retire back to their cell. Nico tells them their hair color will return to normal and while Uno is all screaming, Hajime gets to the cell to warn them to keep their voice down. On getting to the cell, Uno and the others notice no difference in Hajime's head and assume he is invincible. In the end, Jugo and the others are seen running for their lives to avoid Hajime's rage. The following day, Momoko addresses the recruits sent to the prison, and after some time, one of the recruits gives off a weird smile. Later that morning, Jugo escapes his cell again, and Hajime chases after him. After some time, Hajime catches up to Jugo and warns him to stop escaping. Along the line, Jugo transforms his hand into a blade, so he can fight Hajime, but he pays the price in the end, as he gets beaten flawlessly to the ground. After that, Hajime throws Jugo back into his cell while Uno makes fun of him. Minutes later, Mitsuru arrives at Hajime's location, and informs Hajime about a recruit coming for training in Building 13. After a while, 
The recruit arrives, and it turns out that the recruit is Hajime's brother, Hitoshi. When Hajime sees Hitoshi, he expresses shock while Uno and the others are excited to see Hitoshi. Moving on, Uno, Rock, and Jugo all enter into a conversation where Uno asks if Hitoshi is Hajime's brother. Because Hitoshi is beautiful, Uno and Rock find it hard to believe that Hajime and Hitoshi are related. Later that day, Hajime, Hitoshi, and Nico sit in the guard room where Hajime expresses discomfort because his little brother is now working in the prison. Minutes later, Jugo arrives and asks Hitoshi if he is Hajime's brother. But before he can get a reply, Hajime finds out that Jugo escaped his cell again and threatens him. Along the line, Jugo reveals his intentions to Hajime which is to know if Hitoshi is truly Hajime's brother. On getting this info from Jugo, Hajime looks pissed and proceeds with his plan to send Jugo and the others back to their cell. Just before Hajime begins the chase, Uno states that if Hajime can catch them, they will all agree that Hitoshi is Hajime's brother. Soon, Uno and Rock run off, and Hitoshi chases after them with Hajime running from the rear. While running away from Hajime, Uno notices that Hitoshi is slow, compared to Jugo, who cannot run. Soon, Hitoshi gives up on the chase, while Uno and Rock stop at a point when they think they have lost Hajime. Minutes later, Hajime catches up to Uno and Rock, but Uno presses a button that sprinkles liquid nitrogen on Hajime, causing him to freeze on the spot. Seconds after Hajime freezes, Uno and Rock seize the opportunity to run, but Hajime breaks out of the ice leaving Uno and Rock terrified. Just when Uno and Rock try to run, Hajime aims his brother at them but misses his target as Uno and Rock are lucky enough to dodge. Meanwhile, Yamato, who is carrying Jugo to Uno's position, gets lost in Building 13 leaving Jugo slightly pissed. Elsewhere, Mitsuru sits in the control room and notices that a trap has been triggered. After that, a guard enters the control room to verify what the problem is, but Mitsuru covers up for Hajime, stating that they are testing a new trap in Building 13. Back in Building 13, Uno and Rock run for their lives as Hajime chases them using his brother as a weapon. Into the chase, Uno triggers a trap that causes two walls to close, and blocking Hajime from reaching their position. Surprisingly, Hajime tears through the wall, using his brother as a weapon to destroy the wall. Uno and Rock look terrified to their bones and they sprint off screaming for help. Meanwhile, Jugo and Yamato arrive at a corner and witness Uno and Rock running away from Hajime. Hajime, who is out of control at this point, swings his brother in a way that smacks both Yamaoto and Jugo to the ground when he runs past them. Because of that, Jugo gets upset and changes to his other form to go teach Hajime a lesson, but he gets obstructed by Yamato who prevents him from doing something stupid. Afterward, Hajime stops running for seconds after losing track of Uno and Rock. Following that, Mitsuru arrives just behind Hajime to pick up Hitoshi. It turns out that Hitoshi begged Mitsuru to allow him to build 13 so he could his brother in action up close and try to be of help to him. Meanwhile, Uno and Rock hide behind the wall as they watch Hitoshi leave with Mitsuru. Because of Hitoshi's outfit and gestures, Uno states that he doubts that Hitoshi is male and even Rock agrees. After that, Hajime reaches Uno and Rock's position and lands a nasty blow on their heads that causes their heads to swell. Later that day, Hitoshi proceeds to his assigned post, and on the way, Honey and Troa try to get his attention. Seconds into the conversation between Troa, Honey, and Hitoshi, Honey and Troa ask about the color of underwear Hitoshi is putting on, and for some reason, Hitoshi answers. Later that evening, some supervisors and guards sit and have a drink at a spot while Jugo and his comrades wander along the hallway of Building 13. In an underground cell in Nanba Prison, a terrifying inmate sits restrained with evil-looking eyes. Days after the chase between Hajime, Uno, and Rock, Goku gives Upa a talisman for some undisclosed reason while Rock who is jogging at the time notices this and asks Liang what the talisman means. In response, Liang explains that the talisman is used to suppress Upa's chi, adding that the talisman is placed on those who can use chipong, a floating technique that Upa uses. After the jogging session with Liang, Rock enters into a conversation with Liang and Upa asking if Salman Goku Goku is strong. At this point, Rock assumes that Goku is not as strong. Following that, Liang suggests that Rock fights Goku, and he agrees. After the conversation with Liang, Rock heads to meet Goku and challenges him to a battle, hoping to test how strong Goku is. And after some minutes, he agrees to fight Rock. Before the battle begins, Goku tells Rock to come at him with everything he has got, otherwise, the match will be boring, while Tsukumo and Yamato watch the battle from a distance. The battle between Goku and Rock begins, as Rock tries to land a nasty punch on Goku but fails, as Goku easily dodges the punch. Following that, Goku moves swiftly in battle, Goku lands a nasty punch on Rock with his eyes closed, and Upa observes how easy the battle seems for Goku. After Rock gets up, he tries several attacks on Goku, 
but fails to get Goku even once. Because Rock relies on brute force and uncoordinated attacks, Goku easily takes advantage of him and lands an attack that ends their battle. As Rock lies with his back facing the ground, Goku gives him a pep talk about his fighting skills, adding that his moves are not so bad. After that, Rock emphasizes that Goku is so strong, yet Hajime defeated him in the past and when Goku hears Hajime's name from Rock's mouth, he fumes in rage and threatens Rock. Minutes after the battle with Rock, Goku meets up with Inori, and he finds out that they have a recruit to assist in Building 5. The rookie assigned to Building 5 is Huzuki Sanzu, and he introduces himself to Goku seconds after arriving behind Inori. Later that day, all supervisors assemble in a meeting with the warden, where Momoko reveals that she is leaving the prison to attend an emergency meeting at the police headquarters. While in the meeting, Momko reveals that she does not know when she will be back, adding that she was asked to bring data on Jugo and Musashi to the emergency meeting. Even at this point, Momoko wonders why the police headquarters wants info on Jugo and Musashi and the meeting comes to an end after Momoko leaves the prison under the control of the supervisors respectively. Later that day, Momoko leaves Nanba prison on a chopper and holds a doll of Hajime to herself. Minutes after she leaves, some supervisors sit in a room including Goku talk about Momoko's departure. Soon, Kat, a representative of Building 8, begins a conversation about an event that happened in the prison in the past that triggers Goku. Because of that, Goku grabs Kat by his neck and emphasizes that he is not his brother. Along the line, Kat states that Goku only became a supervisor because he took over from his brother's place, Enki Goku. Also, Kat adds that he does not trust Goku, and it turns out that Goku's brother Enki Goku killed an inmate in Building 5 in the past. This explains how Salmon Goku became a supervisor and why Cat does not trust him. Minutes later, Goku leaves the room after being compared to his brother Enki, who is locked up in prison. After Goku leaves the room, Mitsuba slaps the shit out of Cat because of his statements adding that Cat is frustrated because Goku outranks him. Afterward, Goku punches a wall hard in anger Bekasui of what Cat said about him earlier. While at it, he remembers the sayings of Enki and recalls how strong and tough Enki is. After some time, a guard arrives at Goku's position telling him that he has a visitor. Afterward, Goku meets up with his visitor and he finds out that the visitor is his big sister Noriko. After some time, they both sit and enter into a conversation where Goku realizes that Sanzu the rookie is his brother. Towards the at the end of their conversation, Noriko asks if Enki is doing well, adding that she was unable to see him the last time she came to visit. At this point, Goku lies stating that his brother went for a meeting, adding that as his brother's deputy, he came to see her in his place. Minutes later, Noriko leaves after dropping a box full of snacks for Goku's colleagues. Elsewhere, an unidentified person opens a drawer containing talismans and takes one of them. Hours later, Tsukumo trains with Leong and picks up a few moves while Yamato and Rock watch from a distance. Meanwhile, Kenshiru stands alone and stares into space as he misses the warden already. Seconds later, Mitsuba arrives at the spot and consoles Kenshiru. After that, they both talk about what happened earlier with Kat, and Mitsuba emphasizes that what Kat said to Goku was wrong. Moments later, Seitaru arrives at Hajime's position and offers him tea. Soon, Seitaru reveals that Jugo has been acting strangely after his last major escape attempt from the prison. Meanwhile, Jugo wanders off in the hallway, but just when he turns his back, he sees Rock standing behind him, while Yamato arrives at Hajime's position with a serious look on his face. For some strange reason, Rock lands an attack on Jugo, while Yamato punches Seitaro hard on his face. As a result of Yamato's weird behavior, Hajime steps in to fight Yamato to prevent him from doing something stupid. For some reason Yamato does not seem like himself, but he still insists on fighting as he opposes Hajime in battle. Seconds later, Hajime lands a nasty punch on Yamato, sending him falling to the ground. Meanwhile, Rock drags Jugo along the hallway, and Jugo, who is in pain, wonders about what is wrong with Rock. Back in the guard room, Seiteru carries a medical box to see how he can revive Yamato after taking a nasty hit from Hajime. Seconds later, Yamato wakes up and punches Seiteru hard in the face, setting Seiteru in a critical condition. Elsewhere, Rock proceeds to cell 13 while Jugo tries to prevent him from getting there. Along the line, Jugo gets punched in his abdomen and as a result, he spits blood on the ground. At this point, Uno and Nico are worried about Jugo and they tell him to open the door, but Jugo refuses. Meanwhile, Yamato lies unconscious after taking a nasty hit from Hajime, and Hajime sees a yellow talisman on Yamato's neck. Back at cell 13, Tsukumo saves Jugo from Rock's wrath, and reveals that Rock and Yamato seemed oddly quiet when he was coming back from Building 5, adding that he followed Rock because of that. While Jugo converses with Tsukumo, Rock prepares an attack heading for Tsukumo, but he misses his target as Tsukumo manages to counter the attack. Seconds later, Rock gets up from the floor and Uno notices the yellow talisman behind Rock's back, 
and informs Tsukumo quickly. After Tsukumo gets this info, he proceeds to take the talisman off Rock's neck be he fails in the process. Rock suspends Tsukumo in the air with a single hand and prepares a nasty punch for him. Just before Rock punches Tsukumo, Jugo manages to gain Rock's attention and Rock throws Tsukumo to the ground in the process and proceeds to Jugo's position. Although Tsukumo lies weak on the ground, he manages to take the talisman off Rock's neck before Rock lands further damage on Jugo. Rock falls to the ground and Tsukumo realizes that the talisman looks familiar. Elsewhere, Goku finds out that all the talismans present in a specific drawer are missing and he has no clue how they all disappeared. Later that night, Jugo gets treated at the infirmary, and Otogi, the doctor, wonders what is wrong in Building 13. Sitting beside Jugo are Uno and Nico, who seem worried about Rock. Soon, Jugo confirms Uno's observation in the battle against Rock, stating that Rock stopped moving immediately after the talisman was removed. Also, Nico reveals that he recognizes the talisman, but struggles to remember where he last saw it. At this point, Tsukumo, who is also at the infirmary, reveals that the talisman is from Building 5 of the prison, adding that he knows how it's used. However, Jugo re-emphasizes that Rock was not himself earlier, while Tsukumo goes on to explain what the talisman is used for. Here, Tsukumo reveals that the talisman is is used on someone who can use Qigong like Upa, adding that the talisman can suppress or control Upa's power. At this point, Uno states that Yamato and Rock do not use Qigong, but Tsukumo stipulates that if the talisman can control someone who uses Qigong, it can control a normal person. Elsewhere, Hajime arrives at the guard room and sees Mitsuba there, but then asks about the whereabouts of Goku. After that, he reveals his intentions of meeting Goku, which is about the talisman he took off Yamato's neck, but then Mitsuba reveals that he does not know where Goku is. Back at the infirmary, Uno continues his conversation with Jugo and the others about the talisman stating that someone is behind everything that happened earlier. Soon their conversation comes to an end when Uno suggests that they all go and inspect Building 5 themselves. The following day, Uno, Jugo, and Nico try to persuade Hajime to let them join him to inspect Building 5. But Hajime declines. It takes a while of persuasion and some minutes of calculated thoughts before Hajime agrees to Uno's wishes. Minutes later, Hajime takes Jugo, Nico, and Uno to Building 5 and just in front of the building. Hajime gets a status report of the building from Mitsuru, and from there, he finds out that no guards are present in Building 13. Afterward, Hajime and the others enter Building 5, and after some seconds, Hajime gets trapped in a cage. Seeing Hajime in a cage amuses both Nico and Uno, as they laugh joyfully. Soon, Jugo, Nico, and Uno fall to the ground, leaving Hakimi trapped at the surface. Following that, Inori comes out of the shadows and mocks Hajime because he was caught so easily. While in Building 5, Jugo, Uno, and Nico fall several meters into the ground until they reach a cell where Liang and Upa are present. Seconds later, Uno asks Liang and Upa what they are doing in the cell, and Upa responds saying that they are restrained. After that, a conversation starts between Uno and Liang. Uno reveals that he heard that the talisman is in Building 5 so he came to check it out. While Uno speaks, Upa for some reason tells him to lower his voice, and it turns out that a surveillance doll for Building 5 underground cell is patrolling the area with a sickle-like weapon. Meanwhile, Inori takes Hajime to another cell in cuffs that explode when one tries to remove it. A few meters away from Hajime is Goku, who stands restrained opposite Hajime's cell. Even in Goku's condition, he mocks Hajime because he sits restrained in a cell. Back in Upa's cell, Jugo unlocks the cuffs easily without any explosion, and Uno looks excited and praises Jugo for his awesomeness. Elsewhere, Inori and Ruka report to an unidentified man who sits on a pile of rocks. It turns out that the unidentified man is Salman Goku's brother, Enki, who recently escaped from the underground prison of Building 5. Back at Upa's cell, he speaks of his time in a previous prison where Enki was assigned, stating that Enki cruelly beat many inmates in that prison, adding that the inmates were nothing but training dummies Enki uses to get stronger. Along the line, Upa reveals that Enki was imprisoned in Nanba prison because he killed an inmate, and at this point, Uno realizes that Enki is out of his cell. Meanwhile, Inori, Ruka, and Sanzu proceed to an alley following Enki their leader, while Jugo opens the cell door to allow Up and the others to move out. Just before Jugo and the others are about to leave the cell, Nico tries hard to find his bag of medicine and Jugo joins him to look for it. Elsewhere, QI walks behind Sanzu and teases him but holds a bag belonging to Jugo. A few hours earlier, Goku is present in a room in Building 5 confirming the number of talismans present in a drawer. After some seconds, he finds out that the missing talisman he is looking for was not taken from that room. After that, a guard runs into the room and informs Goku that Enki Goku has escaped from his cell. After Goku gets this info, he looks shocked because a prisoner can't escape from an underground cell. Just before Goku leaves to stop his brother, the guard warns him that Enki is supported by Ruka Goju, 
a former guard and another prisoner. Minutes later, Goku heads out of a door in Building 5 and sees Ruka, the former guard, lying in a pool of water. Following that, Goku questions how Ruka got out of prison, but in response, Ruka tells Goku to ask the person standing behind him. At this point, Goku feels the intimidating presence of his huge brother, who punches him as soon as he turns his head to look at him. After Goku gets up from the ground, Enki warns that he will kill him if he stands in his way. After that, Goku assumes an offensive position and fights with his brother Enki, while Ruka mocks Goku, stating that after Enki was locked up in the past, people could not stand working under him. Seconds later, Inori arrives with Upa and Liang who are unconscious at the time. At this point, Goku finds out that Inori has been working with Enki. Sometime in the past when Enki killed an inmate, Goku arrived at the spot alongside other supervisors, but it was Hajime who stepped in to neutralize Enki over Goku because Goku hesitated for some reason. Because of that, Hajime was promoted to supervisor in recognition of his skill. Back at the poolside, Inori uses that event to mock Goku making him feel bad about himself. It is at this point that Goku finds out that Inori has been working with Enki from the very beginning. However, Goku sits locked up in his cell in real time with chains used to restrain his hands. Even at this point, Goku still mocks Hajime because he is locked up in a cell. After that, Goku tells Hajime that Enki escaped from prison, adding that he tried to stop his brother. Towards the end of their conversation, Hajime emphasizes that Enki is a criminal, and that Goku should not hesitate to kill him, if he must stop him. After Upa and the others make it out of their cell, they all proceed to an alley where Jugo finds Hajime's tag on the ground. Soon, Uno suggests that they proceed to Hajime's position, so that they can all escape the building with him. Along the line, Jugo, Nico, and the others find Honey and Troa locked up in a cell. Following that, Troa narrates how they were forced into cells when they arrived at Building 5. Seconds later, Troa and Honey are freed from the cell, and they both find out that Enki is behind everything. Soon, both teams decide to join forces so that they can defeat Enki's men and escape the prison with Hajime's help. Jugo, Upa, and the others proceed along the first level of the underground prison, and while at it, Uno freaks out as one of the surveillance dolls pulls his hair. Because Uno freaks out, he screams as he runs along the alley with Upa and the others behind him. Along the line, Jugo looks tired already from running consistently, and Upa tries to support him so he does not fall behind. After some time, Jugo and the others get to a point where the weird dolls stop chasing them. The place features a door with an inscription, Management Office, written on the door. Soon, Jugo and the clothes get into the room and Upa reveals that the office was rumored to be used by Enki. Seconds after entering the office, Upa notices that Nico is not feeling well, and because of that, Jugo wanders off to find water. In Jugo's search for water, he stumbles on a red box and opens it to see the contents. After opening the box, he sees information concerning several inmates, and after some time, he sees something that surprises him. Elsewhere, Enki enters into a conversation with Inori where he confirms that Jugo was captured with Hajime. It turns out that Enki knows about Jugo's powers and he has faced him before. In real time, Enki looks forward to killing and eliminating Jugo himself. Back in the management office, Jugo sees a file containing information about him and he looks terrified. Soon, Unoa arrives at his position, and Jugo hides the documents back in the box. After Nico is done catching his breath, Jugo and the others leave the office as the coast is clear. While walking in the hallway, Jugo thinks deeply about himself, and worries that people know more about him than he knows himself. It gets to a point where Jugo wonders if he is human, based on what he saw in the documents about him earlier. Moving on, Jugo and others arrive at a point leading to the second underground level. Liang gets attacked by Rokuriki, a Building 5 guard. After Liang falls to the ground, he notices that Rokuriki has a talisman of a different kind on his head. It turns out that the talisman is an attack charm that fuels the subject's combative spirit and forces the body to move as explained by Liang. After that, Liang assumes an attacking position to fight off Rokuriki, while Upa and the others watch from a distance. Seconds into the battle against Rokuriki, Liang moves swiftly and dodges all attacks coming at him but he gets wounded in the process due to the nature of Rokuriki's weapon. Their battle goes on to a point where Upa interferes and lands a nasty kick on Rokuriki, on his back setting him unconscious immediately. Jugo opens the pathway leading to the next underground level, and after that, Upa and Liang volunteer to stay behind to take care of Rokuriki. As a result, Nico seems worried about his master, Upa. Following that, Liang locks the passage behind Jugo, and tells him to proceed on the mission encouraging him that he can save the supervisors if he keeps going. Minutes later, Upa uses a chai blast on the wall to prevent Jugo and the others from using the passage. Despite the fact that Rokuriki was knocked out cold by Upa, he regains consciousness after some time and assumes an attacking position against Liang and Upa. Just behind Rokukiri is Hachiman, 
a huge inmate who escaped from the underground cell. It turns out that Liang and Upa have got history with Hachiman, and it turns out that Hachiman is their former boss. However, Hachiman reveals that he intends to kill Liang and Upa, and after that, Rokukiri proceeds to attack his opponents. Because of the last battle against Rokukiri, Liang deploys a different technique to redirect Rokukiri's weapons, and he destroys the weapons after some seconds of battle. Following that, Liang lands a nasty attack on Rokukiri that sends him falling to the ground. Because Rokukiri was defeated easily by Liang, Hachimen mocks him and picks up his large weapon to fight Liang and Upa. Hachimen's words are both annoying and triggering to Upa, and because of that, Upa delivers a nasty blow to Hachimen, setting him falling to the ground meters away from Liang and Upa. At this point, Upa looks pretty confident and challenges Hachimen to a battle. While Hachimen lies on the ground, Nico proceeds from the shadows and looks excited, because he got to see Upa fighting up close. Unfortunately, Hachimen dives in midair, to launch a nasty attack on Upa, but he fails because Sui Liang moves Nico and Upa from their position. Following that, Upa places Nico in a spot so he does not mimic his powers when he starts fighting, because if he does, it will put a lot of stress on his body. Soon, Upa and Liang assume attacking positions as Hachimna charges at them. Following that, Upa and Liang try to land an attack on Hachiman, but they fail as their opponent blocks their attacks easily without taking damage. After that, Hachiman aims a poison gas at his opponents. As a result, Liang and Upa find out that Chi is working for Hachiman because he specializes in making chemicals. Sometime in the past, Chi was summoned to Hachiman's organization because of his unique skills. While in the meeting with Hachiman, Chi finds out that Hachiman intends to use his skills as a herbalist to his advantage. Also, Hachiman states that he will pay off all of Chi's debt, provided Chi agrees to work for him. Because of that, Chi began to work for Hachiman, making commercial drugs for his boss that cannot be tracked. While making drugs in his lab, Liang arrives at Chi's spot, and they both enter into a conversation about the drugs that Chi makes for his boss. Also, from Liang's tone and body language, Chi quickly realizes that Liang has not killed anyone before even though he is an assassin. Towards the end of their conversation, Chi tells Liang that he will get caught if he keeps letting his targets live. After Liang leaves the lab, Upa wakes up from the bed in the lab and converses with Chi about his reason for working for Hachiman. At this point, Upa reveals that he is working for Hachiman to keep himself alive, while Liang is working for Hachiman to keep someone else alive. After some time, Chi meets Hachiman in his lair, and he finds out that Hachiman wants him to make poisonous drugs. At first, Chi disagrees with the idea, but Hachiman lands a nasty punch on Chi to force him to agree to his wishes. Seconds later, Hachiman threatens Chi by displaying Liang, who looks half alive. It turns out that Hachiman found out about the people Liang left alive and killed them. Still at Hachiman's lair, Hachiman states that Chi will meet the same fate as Liang if he refuses to obey him. Back in real time, Chi hides in a corner while Hachiman fights Liang and the others. Moving on, Upa and Chi look exhausted as a result of their battle against Hachiman. At that spot, Hachiman carries his large weapon and tries to eliminate Chi and Upa in a single strike, but Nico arrives in time and prevents the weapon from coming in contact with Upa and Chi. Because of that, Chi and Upa look worried about Nico because they assume that he cannot beat Hachiman. While holding Hachiman's weapon, Nico reveals that his chest hurts, because he has not taken his medicine adding that if he stayed with Jugo and Uno, he would have slowed them down. Because of how small Nico is as compared to Hachiman's weapon, Hachiman wonders who Nico is, and after some time, he aims poison blades at Nico that make him fall to the ground. Despite the fact that the poison in the blades is meant to kill Nico, Hachiman looks shocked as Nico survives the effect poison and Nico gets back on his feet, preparing to fight Hachiman. Meanwhile, Uno realizes that he left Nico behind, and after that, he finds out that Nico did not take his medicine. Back in the battle against Hachiman, Nico goes aggressive. Along the line, Hachiman exposes Nico to poison gas, but Nico suffers no effect from the gas. After that, Nico jumps into midair and aims at Hachiman with an aerial kick. The attack does not deal enough damage on Hachimel. He gets swung and tossed to the ground. Minutes after Enchio gets up from the ground, he charges at Hachiman to fight him, but Liang prevents him because an explosive attack is heading for Nico that would kill him. Along the line, Rokukiri regains consciousness and aims a chi blast at Liang giving Hachiman the upper hand in the battle. Following that, Upa receives nasty blows from Hachiman when he tries to attack Rokukiri. Even as Nico is in pain, he charges at Hachiman because Liang lies weak on the ground, and in the process, Hachiman grabs him by the neck and lifts him above the ground. Soon, life gradually slips away from Nico as he gets choked by Hachiman's massive hands, but even then, he begs to get his medicine. Just after Nico stops responding to human pain, Hachiman pronounces him dead, while Liang and Upa look in shock. Unfortunately, the once calm and cool Nico switches to his psychopathic side and gives off a weird smile while staring at Hachiman choking him. 
While on the second level of the underground prison of Building 5, Uno worries about Nico, and because of that, Honey gets curious and asks to know about Nico's condition. Uno explains that when the effect of Nico's medicine wears off, Nico goes out of control because of the side effects of some experiments that were performed on Nico years in the past. At this point, Jugo worries about Nico and proposes to save him, but Troa interrupts him saying that they all have to go forward. Back at Hachiman's location, Hachiman looks stunned and wonders what Nico is, because Nico looks him dead in the eye and gives a weird, terrifying smile. Following that, Nico easily takes Hachiman's hand off his neck and proceeds to attack Hachiman, and this time, he looks more dangerous. During the battle between Nico and Hachiman, Nico craves his medicine. Soon, Hachiman instructs Rokukiri to attack Nico and Rokukiri aims a large chi blast at Nico. After the blast gets to Nico, he uses a single hand to hold the blast and then redirects it to Hachiman while Chi still watches from a distance and notices Nico's condition. Along the line, Upa manages to get rid of the talisman on Rokukiri's head while Nico gets slammed to a wall. Even after taking a nasty hit, Nico gets on his feet craving medicine and he goes full berserker on Hachiman, using his speed to land multiple attacks on his opponent. Minutes later, Chi proceeds out of the shadows and reveals himself to Hachiman, Upa, and the others present at the scene. Nico senses something about Chi, and he moves swiftly to Chi's position. One thing leads to another, and Chi injects Nico with his medicine and lays him to rest. After Chi takes care of Nico for Hachiman, Hachiman orders him to inject him. But Chi seizes the opportunity to inject Hachiman with a poisonous chemical that will disrupt Hachiman's nervous system. Seconds after the injection, Chi reveals that he wants to kill Hachiman, adding that he knew Hachiman was going to kill him from the beginning. Because of Chi's history with Hachiman, he vows never to forgive Hachiman for his actions in the past. Years in the past, while Chi was working for Hachiman, he discovered that Upa was captured because of his skills and abilities, and some of his organs were taken from him. In real time, Chi yells at Hachiman stating that he will defeat him, and as a result, Hachiman lands a nasty punch on his face. Just when Hachiman tries to finish Chi off, Upa and Linag arrive just in time to prevent Hachiman from killing Chi. Furthermore, Chi begins to apologize to Liang and Upa, because he was hiding in the shadows the whole time they were fighting against Hachiman and Rokukiri. Along the line, Upa looks pissed because Chi acts without informing him of his actions or plans. Back in the past, Chi received info from his colleague that Upa's organs were stolen, and Upa is working for Hachiman so he can repurchase his organs. After Chi gets this info, he feels pity for Upa's condition and volunteers to donate some of his organs to Upa. Back in real time, Upa looks upset because of Chi's actions in the past, stating that he never asked Chi to give him his organs. Even as Upa is upset, Chi tells Upa that they need each other if they are going to start all over. Meanwhile, Nico, who is conscious at this point, hears Chi's words about starting over and begins to think about the happy times he spent with Jugo, Uno, and Nico. Soon, Hachiman gets up from the ground and mocks Nico and the others present at the scene, then proceeds to attack them. At this point, Upa, Liang, and Chi to fight against Hachiman, but Chi misses his first shot at Hachiman. During their battle, Liang keeps Hachiman busy, while Upa goes aerial and aims a massive Chi blast at Hachiman but he misses his target as Hachiman moves swiftly and dodges the attack. Seconds later, Liang and Upa manage to keep Hachiman occupied till Chi releases a toxic gas at Hachiman. After Hachiman inhales the gas, he falls on his knees as the gas takes effect in his body and places him under Chi's control. Seconds later, Hachiman chokes himself while under Chi's control and he begs for his life. Along the line, Chi snaps his fingers and Hachiman falls unconscious to the ground. After that, Liang questions Chi if Hachiman is dead, and Chi answers by stating that he just knocked Hachiman out, adding that the medicine has taken effect and it will be dangerous to kill him. Seconds later, Nico runs and hugs Upa excited because Hachiman has been defeated. Minutes after Hachiman is defeated, Chi changes Nico's bandages while Upa thinks deeply about the talisman he took off Rokuriki. Seconds later, Upa tells Liang that there is a possibility that the talisman was not owned by Enki because when he destroyed the talisman, the Chi flow from it was strange. After that, Upa tries to wake Rokuriki up to get information from him, but fails as Rokuriki does not regain consciousness in time. Moving on, Chi lifts Rokuriki so that he can support him to the next level of the prison. Because of the escaped convicts, including the likes of Enki in Building 5, Nico looks scared and feels concerned for Upa because his life is at risk, but Upa states that he has to protect Building 5. Soon, the conversation between Nico and Upa comes to an end as Upa walks away. Meanwhile, Tsukumo lies on a hospital bed thinking about the first time that Rock and Yamato started acting strangely. Just beside Tsukumo is Nokiro, Goku's big sister who lies unconscious on a hospital bed too. It turns out that she missed the visitor's ship and Kat has to watch over her for the day. Back in Building 5, 
Trois and Honey try to prevent Uno from going back to find Nico. At this point, Trois explains that Nico will be safe where he is if he is hiding at the first level. Soon, water from nowhere arrives at their position and sweeps all of them down the stairs. After the water goes away, Uno gets up only to find out that Jugo is unconscious. While Honey still complains about Jugo's condition, Uno suggests that he should help revive Jugo so he does not die. After that, all three of them play a game to determine which of them will give Jugo a mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. After the game, Honey loses and as such he gets to give Jugo a mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to save Jugo's life. Furthermore, Honey swallows his pride and revives Jugo using the mouth-to-mouth -mouth technique saving him from dying. Along the line, Troy notices something about some walls, and then tells Jugo to open a door for him. After Jugo opens the door, the lights get turned on, and Uno freaks out when he sees a bunch of surveillance dolls hanging in the room. Just before Uno could scream, Jugo and Honey arrive in time to cover Uno's mouth to prevent him from screaming. Moving on, Troy investigates the internal components of a surveillance doll he finds on the ground. While tearing through the doll, he finds out that the dolls were created similarly to humans. And after some time, Trois finds a device buried deep in the doll's upper body, and he takes it out when he sees it. Soon, Uno, Jugo, Trois, and Honey proceed out of the room and continue their journey. Along the line, Honey gets curious about Jugo for some reason, and asks Uno what he knows about him. After that, Uno goes on to speak of the times he spent with Jugo breaking out of jails together. At this point, Honey is pissed about the fact that he cannot tell what is on Jugo's mind. Minutes later, they all walk to a point where they see Ruka, the guard that escaped, meters away from them. Because of how Ruka is dressed, Twa assumes that Ruka is queer, while Ruka denies the claims. Minutes later, two guards of Building 5, named Yuriki and Kokoriki, respectively arrive just behind Roku, with talismans on their heads. However, Uno and the others take off on their heels after analyzing their situation, while Mitsuba yells at Ruka because he is locked up in a cell. After Mitsuba gets Ruka's attention, he tells Mitsuba that he is going to ruin his makeup if he keeps frowning. Following that, Mitsuba tells Ruka to return his makeup kit, but Ruka tells him that he will stay locked up for a while. Elsewhere, Uno and the others run away from Yuriki and Kokoriki who chase after them, while Mitsuba tries to persuade Ruka to open his cell and let him go, offering to give him some products that will help with his skincare. The offers are so appealing to Ruka, that he thinks about Mitsuba's offer for a while puzzling if he should give in or not. Uno, Jugo, and Honey try their best to run away from Yuriki and Kokoriki. Trois arrives at the spot and aims a rocket launcher at both guards. It turns out that Trois was able to make the weapon from the metal scraps he found earlier. Following that, Trois takes out a flamethrower and torches the path in front of the guards who lie unconscious on the ground. Along the line, Jugo notices something strange about the floor, as Uno and Honey proceed to leave the scene. Just then, Ruka comes out from the floor and catches up to Jugo preventing him from moving. At this point, Ruka is aware that Uno, Troa, and Honey cannot go further because he has Jugo. Since Ruka has leverage in this situation, Uno and the others stop running while Honey looks pissed, as he assumes that Jugo was dragging his legs the whole time to get caught. He threatens to kill him if Uno and Honey do not reveal their intentions in the underground prison. Seconds later, Trois uses an object to land an attack on Ruka and then runs off with Jugo and the others. After Trois, Uno, Jugo, and Honey cover a safe distance, Honey who looks pissed at the time tells Jugo that he is holding the team back, adding that he should not join them. For some reason, Honey is upset that Jugo has no skill other than opening locks, and he hates the fact that their mission will end if Jugo dies in the process. At a point, Heine lets his rage take control of him and he grabs Jugo by his shirt and prepares to punch him. After that, Uno grabs Honey's hand, preventing him from punching Jugo, while Jugo remains silent. Because of that, Jugo asks Uno if he noticed anything about his facial expression. But Uno replies, telling Jugo that he has not been himself. Moving on, Uno begins to speak of the time he spent with Jugo, in the past adding that there is never a dull moment with him, but he expresses that he does not know Jugo's true feeling. In addition, Uno states that Jugo is the only one he cannot read, by observing his attitude and facial expressions, but he believes that Jugo will open up to him one day. Soon the conversation between Uno and Jugo comes to an end as their enemies arrive at their location. Next, Uno runs along with Jugo and tries to assist Jugo so he does not get left behind. Along the line, Uno and Jugo get attacked by the guards, alongside Ruka who comes out from the ground. Seconds later, Ruka orders Yuriki to crush Jugo and he proceeds to land a nasty punch on Jugo's face causing him to bleed in the process. As Yurikiri tries to land the second punch on Jugo, Uno moves swiftly to attack Yuriki, but he gets obstructed by Ruka, who holds his leg from beneath the ground. Furthermore, Troy tries to convince Honey to assist and save Uno and Jugo, but Honey declines at first stating that Uno and Jugo got them in their situation. After taking several punches from Yuriki, meanwhile Jugo falls to the ground 
while Uno worries about Jugo as he lies on the ground restrained by Ruka. Because Uno is worried about Jugo, Ruka gets irritated, and because of that, he decides to kill Uno first. Just when Ruka tries to kill Uno, his weapon gets broken, and he wonders how it happened. Following that, Honey arrives at the scene and moves his hand in a way that makes Yuriki and Kokoriki hit themselves in mid-air. It looks as if Honey is using telekinesis because he easily moves Uno and Jugo to his position without physical contact with them. Seconds later, Jugo and Uno get clarification of Honey's skill as they see that Honey uses a thin rope to move things as he pleases. After Jugo is safe, Trois explains that Honey only uses his skill as a last resort. After that, they all notice that Ruka is gone and they wonder how he appeared in the first place. Because of Honey's thin rope on Ruka, he easily knows where Ruka is just below them. After Trois performs some analysis on the floor, he explains that Ruka is inside the water below the ground, explaining why it was easy to catch Jugo earlier, and Honey confirms this. Uno steams hot at Honey because if he had revealed this knowledge, Jugo would not have been caught. Also, Jugo apologizes to Troa for being slow, adding that he will be careful the next time. And Troa tells him to apologize to Honey too. After that, Troa tells Jugo not to let Honey's words bother him, adding that he should have self-confidence. Before he is done speaking to Jugo, he tells him that his escape technique is quite cool and fascinating and this puts a smile on Jugo's face. Furthermore, Troa manages to convince Honey to use his insane skill again, and after some time, Troa aims a grenade at the end of the thread leading to Ruka. After the grenade explosives, Ruka is left vulnerable, and he wonders how Troa was able to spot his location. Ruka sees the thin rope connected in several patterns around the room, and he takes it off and escapes into the water before Honey can pull him. After Troa conduits some careful analysis of the floor, Honey realizes where Ruka is and pulls his rope exposing Ruka again. Ruka wonders how Honey can pull him, because he got rid of the thin thread. Little did he know that there was another on him. Also. Yuriki and Kokoriri try to attack, but Honey aims more threads to strategic points, while Troyes aims a wrench to the ground. Unfortunately for Ruka, he tries to escape into the water as Honey raises a barrier of threads coming for him, but he fails because the wrench prevents him from descending. Soon, Honey uses his strength to tie up Ruka and the two guards suspending them in mid-air in the process. After Honey suspends them, he pulls hard on his threads till he bleeds just so he can raise a part of the ground in a way that will cage Ruka and the guards while Jugo and Uno look amazed by Honey's insane skill. After Honey is done, Troa aims multiple explosives at Ruka's position, and it explodes while Jugo observes how amazing Honey and Troa are. Along the line, one of Honey's threads begins to shake, and after he notices this, he tells Uno to run. Minutes later, the floor cage Honey raised to hold Ruka, and the guards broke down as lots of water flowed past it, leaving Ruka standing on a rock with an evil look on his face. Elsewhere, Mitsuba feels something like an earthquake in the building and he wonders why no one has come to save him yet. Meanwhile, Ruka uses his special fans to create a massive wind, aiming it at Troa and the others. After the effect of the wind clears off, Ruka finds out that Troa and the others managed to escape, and he looks irritated. In the meantime, Honey holds a pile of rocks together with his threads separating Ruka from their position. While he holds the threads together, he bleeds, and Jugo looks stunned by his abilities. Honey boasts of his abilities, telling Jugo that he cannot do something like that. Next, Troy and Uno think of ways they can get out of their situation, and Troy suggests that Jugo and Uno should head off to the descending stairs while he will hold off Ruka with Honey, adding that if Uno and Jugo stick around, they will all get blown away. Along the line, Ruka arrives at their location, and after some time, Jugo and Uno run away following Troyce's wishes. After Jugo leaves the scene, Troyce and Honey try to hold off Ruka using their unique skills, but it is not enough to defeat Ruka. After that, Ruka summons a nasty wind at Troa and Honey, but it does not affect his opponents, because someone else blocks it. While the fog clears out, Ruka sees a distinct figure fuming in red flames, and it turns out that the distinct figure is Jugo, who took his other form. When Ruka sees Jugo, he looks stunned, and it turns out that Enki knows about Jugo's existence too. Ruka intends to kill Jugo so he can finally understand Enki, and as a result, he prepares an attack for Jugo. After Ruka summons a large wind at Jugo, the wind gets cut, and he looks surprised as a result. Their battle gets to a point where Jugo holds Ruka's wind using his sword and aims it back at Ruka, sending him into the ground. Because Jugo exerted himself so much, he falls into the water in front of him, and Honey jumps into the water to save him. Next, Troa asks Uno why they came back, and Uno replies, stating it was Jugo's idea to come back and help them. After Honey takes Jugo out of the water, Jugo regains consciousness, and then, 
brags about his abilities to Honey just as Honey did earlier. Elsewhere, Enki proceeds to the stairs and, while at it, he detects multiple presences in the prison and asks Inori if he truly captured the inmates. Inori replies, saying yes, adding that he left the rest of the task to Ruka. Before Enki proceeds up the stairs, he states that he detects a foreign presence in the prison that is not human. Moving on, Hajime feels a shaking in the prison, and Goku reveals that it is a result of Ruka's power. Back at Jugo's position, Yuriki and Kokoriki question Jugo and the others asking what they are doing outside their cells. It turns out that the guards are back to normal as the talismans are off their heads. Yet Uno tries to use this to his advantage by trying to convince them that they were locked up in the cell against their will and they are looking for their supervisor. Along the line, Yuriki punches Uno on his lower abdomen, as he does not believe Uno's words and he intends to lock up both Jugo and Uno. Because of what is at stake, Uno decides to tell the truth, including the part where Enki escaped. Even after Uno tells the truth, Yuriki and Kokoriki still intend to lock Honey and the others up, adding that their actions are suspicious. However, Honey uses his threads to restrain Yuriki and Kokoriki, allowing Jugo and Troy to run. Just when Jugo tries to open the lock to the next level, Ruko aims a chain at Uno's neck and tries to drag him away from Jugo. As Jugo witnesses this, he attempts to save Uno, but Uno tells him to proceed on the mission. Furthermore, Jugo recalls the good time he spent with Nico and some other inmates in Uno's gambling room, where Rock states that Jugo cannot do anything aside from jailbreaking. Back in real time, Uno tells Jugo to proceed on the mission and do the thing he knows how to do best. After that, Jugo proceeds on the mission leaving Uno at the mercy of Ruka. Seconds later, Troa arrives at Uno's position and assists Honey in saving Uno. After Uno becomes free of Ruka's chain, Yuriki and Kokoriki arrive at the scene and find out that what Uno told them earlier might be true. At this point, both guards are put in a difficult position because they have to choose between apprehending Uno and his team, or capturing Raku, the escaped inmate. Seconds later, both guards decide to go after Uno and his team, and then Troa aims an explosive at the wall that causes a wall to separate his team from Ruka and the guards. Meanwhile, Jugo arrives at the next level of the underground prison, and he encounters lots of surveillance dolls and takes his other form intending to fight them off. Back at Uno's position, Troa observes that Mitsuba might be close because he detects the scent of Mitsuba's perfume. At the next level in the underground prison, Jugo encounters lots of surveillance dolls, and kills lots of them in the process using brute force and speed. After killing lots of the dolls, he checks the surrounding cells and finds out that they are empty, and then moves on to the next level of the prison. Meanwhile, Enki detects Jugo's presence and suspects that he is getting closer. Mitsuru, on the other hand, notices something off about Building 5 from the control room as the building surveillance systems are cut off. Just behind Mitsuru is Kenshiru, who tells him not to alert the prison about Enki's potential escape, adding that there is a reason that Enki escaped. Seconds later, Kenshioru leaves the control room while Mitsuru worries about what is happening in Building 5. Back in the underground prison, Uno, Troa, and Honey run away from both guards, and while at it, they manage to get away from the guards as Honey uses his skills to raise a barrier that blocks the guards from reaching them. For some reason, Troa gets in the water just in front of him, and Ruka, who swims swiftly inside the water, assumes that Troa wants to challenge him. Meanwhile, Enki gets to the cell where Upa and the others are trapped earlier, and finds out that the cells are empty. Jugo approaches another level of the underground prison, and when he gets there, more surveillance dolls come out to face him, and then assumes his other form to fight the dolls. Furthermore, Enki detects Jugo's presence and moves away from his current position while Inori joins him from behind. Minutes later, Ruka attacks Troa in the water, but Troa uses his beautiful face and gestures to charm Ruka. Along the line, Honey obtains a bunch of keys from Troy, and after some time, Yurikiri and Kokoriki break through Honey's barrier. Because of that, Uno and Honey run off to Mitsuru's position. On getting there, Yurikiri and Kokoriki catch up to them, but Honey aims the key at Mitsuba's cell. Eventually, Mitsuba gets out of his cell, pissed about the fact that he was locked up for a while. He assumes that the guards are the ones responsible for locking him up, and then proceeds to spank them on their cheeks. Soon, Twa swims toward Mitsuba, and after that, Ruka proceeds out of the water, pissed about the fact that Twa stole his keys from him. At this point, Ruka is surprised to see Mitsuba out of his cell, and he launches an attack on Uno and the others seconds later, and he uses his weapons to block large water attacks launched at him. Ruka, who is obsessed with Enki's goal does not hold back at Mitsuba, but he easily gets defeated by Mitsuba after some minutes of intense battle. The battle comes to an end, 
as Mitsuba slaps some sense into Raku stating that he should re-examine himself if he is trying to be like another person. Meanwhile, Jugo tears through a bunch of surveillance dolls and proceeds to the next level of the prison. Back at Hajime's cell, Hajime who has had enough of the prison, tries to take the cuffs off even if he will lose his hands. Just before he tries to take the cuffs off, Jugo arrives at the scene soaked in blood. Also, Ruka flips over to Mitsuba's side while Mitsuba comes up with a plan to take Uno, Troa, and Honey out of the underground prison. Along the line, he finds out that Jugo escaped his cell and thinks deeply about Jugo's abilities assuming that things will get dangerous if Jugo is more than he expected. Back at Hajime's cell, Jugo looks excited that he found Hajime but for some reason, Hajime asks Jugo what he is doing there. After Jugo hears the question, he looks confused as he was not expecting such a question from Hajime given their situation. At a higher level of the underground prison, Mitsuba walks along an alley with Uno and the other inmates who are in cuffs. While at it, Liang proceeds from a corner to attack Honey and the others thinking that they are surveillance dolls. Uno finally gets to see Nico. After the meetup, Mitsuba places the rest of the inmates in cuffs and proceeds on the journey out of the underground prison. Minutes later, Mitsuba assumes an attacking position after he sees a bunch of surveillance dolls. Back at Jugo's position, Hajime asks Jugo of his plans, and he replies stating that he came there out of his own will. Soon, Jugo begins to explain the reason behind his intentions, adding that Enki escaped and the part where he wants to rescue Hajime from the cell. Seconds later, Jugo turns his back only to find out that Goku is in the cell just behind him. Jugo opens Hajime's cell, while Goku looks shocked. After Hajime gets out of the cell, surveillance dolls arrive at their position and Jugo unlocks the cuffs just in time for Hajime to fight off the dolls. However, Hajime defeats the dolls in a single strike and proceeds to leave the prison. While at it, Jugo asks about Goku but Hajime has a hard time deciding if Goku should be released or not. Seconds later, Hajime agrees for Goku to be released even as Goku does not want to be released. After Jugo takes off Goku's cuffs, he realizes that Hajime is hiding something from him and proceeds to restrain Jugo. Goku gets punched in the face by Hajime because he was acting like a jerk after being released. Soon, more surveillance dolls arrive at their position, and Hajime proceeds to fight them off. Meanwhile, Mitsuba and the others are surrounded by a lot of surveillance dolls while Yamato and Seiderao lie in pain at the infirmary. Afterward, Enki makes his way out of Building 5 while Hajime and Jugo defeat a bunch of surveillance dolls and arrive at the entrance of Building 5. The End At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.